On this episode of Still Loading, what does rocking chairs have to do with Halo? Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new episode of the Still Loading Podcast. I am your host, Josh Koval, and today's episode is going to be a bit more of a personal one. This week's episode is focusing on my memories and experiences of LAN parties, but it's not just that. When trying to brainstorm the title for this episode, I was struggling to find one that really encompassed the feeling that I'm trying to get across with this. Because I'm not talking about just LAN parties, I came up with gaming in a public space, quote unquote, which makes very little sense and is not very catchy at all. But who knows, maybe rocking chairs, Halo 2, and LAN party memories isn't that much better. But in any case, this episode is about some of my experiences growing up and gaming with friends, though not all of them are your standard LAN party slash game night sleepover stories. But before we begin with these stories, I wanted to share a little bit about why I wanted to tell them in the first place. I was listening to the first episode of the podcast, A Gamer Looks at 40, and they were talking about the movie The Wizard. The host of the show, Bill, invited his friend Joey on to reminisce about the movie and going to see it in theaters when they were only eight years old. They spoke about how that movie was such a seminal moment for them and for gamers at the time, especially kids who were Nintendo fans, and how that Mario 3 reveal was such a huge deal, and how gamers their age still look back fondly at that movie and the time they went to see it in theaters. This got me thinking about seminal moments in gaming, and I'm not talking about just the big moments in game evolution or even big moments within the gaming community at large, but moments that expanded outside of the typical gaming community. You see, The Wizard was a major motion picture starring one of the most famous child actors of the era, Fred Savage. This was a representation of gamers in a big film with a real budget behind it and Nintendo's backing. And I'm a little too young to have experienced The Wizard when it was contemporary, but I would have to imagine it meant a lot to kids back then seeing something that resonated with them on such a personal level show up on the big screen, even if it was only for just a little while. I say all this to illustrate that The Wizard, regardless of the current perception of the movie, was a seminal moment in gaming. It was a moment that took the gaming experience outside of the living room and became a moment that the adults who experienced it as kids decades prior still remember fondly. So now, why the hell am I talking about The Wizard, and how does this relate to LAN parties and this whole quote-unquote gaming in a social space thing that I spoke about at the beginning? You see, when I heard that episode from A Gamer Looks at 40, I started thinking about my own seminal moments in gaming. What has been an experience in my gaming life that extended beyond the borders of the living room? I thought about this for a while, and I started remembering all the Halo parties I used to have as a teen, and all the LAN parties that I had with friends in college. And that got me thinking even back further, before Halo, and before the LAN parties. It got me back thinking of the stuff that my parents would let my brothers and I do with gaming at our church. And that is how this episode came to be, trying to find my own seminal moment, my very own wizard, as it were. And while land parties and church memories definitely did not have as big of an impact on gaming culture or game history as the wizard did, but it's still something personal to me that made games feel larger than the world that I saw on the TV screen. This episode is broken up into three interviews with family and friends who were there for these moments. The first interview was very special to me. It's the first time my mom has come onto the podcast. We talk about gaming at church and some of my earliest gaming memories. After that is my friend CJ, who helped me organize the Halo parties in my teens. And the last interview I have is with my friend Jamie, who organized the LAN parties in college, though he called it something different. He didn't call it a LAN party, but we'll get into that in the interview. This episode was a fun personal journey for me to explore, and I hope that you will enjoy it. So sit back, get nostalgic, and let's dive into Rocking Chairs, Halo 2, and Land Party Memories. All 
right. So, Mom, uh, it's your first time on the podcast. First time I'm having you on. Uh, so, first off, how are you doing? I'm good. You good? All right. Uh, how are you feeling? How how what on a scale of one to ten? Where's your nerves at? Oh well. Maybe a six. <laughs> Don't worry. Everyone's going to love you. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to have you on because uh, what the purpose of this episode is, I, you know, I wanted to talk about some of my kind of experiences. Like, I don't know what the best term of, is for it, like gaming in the public, gaming in a public space. I, I'm trying to figure out the right term to use for it. But uh, you were there and you helped facilitate a lot of this, not necessarily on purpose. I kind of like was this nerdy child of yours and I wanted just to play video games any chance that I could. So um, I want to, well, the first thing I want to ask about are the Rockathons. R- Rockathon for me was one of the first things I, first times I can remember like people gathering together, not like a group of friends, but like a communal type of thing. It was with the church, but the communal type of thing of just um, playing like it wasn't intended to play games but people did play a lot of games at the rockathon so for my listeners what is what was the rockathon um we scheduled the rockathon basically was uh we would get kids together with rocking chairs yep. and they would um rock for i think we did it for 24 hours or i it, the the times varied um i think we started out originally with 24 hours and then we were was it lucky really if we 24. I thought it was just like a single overnight thing, but was it really like a like a noon to noon type of I deal? think it was like overnight uh, like 24 wild. hours, but I think we got a little after a while it got to that was a bit much. So I think we would do like but we off we almost always did it through the night. Yeah. It was it was not a daytime at event. You would start it in the evening and at least take it through till the next morning. And the idea was that you would get sponsors Mm -hmm. to contribute money and then it would help maybe a local organization or a family in need. I know, I think one year we did it for a family in need that, that, um, we just wanted to get them some help with groceries and clothing and things like that. And so we raised some funds for that. Okay. Um, so that was, that was the purpose of it. And it was just a fun opportunity for kids to just hang around together for for a full 24 for hours for a full apparently. 24 hours rocking, rocking in a rocking chair I, I do remember you guys were not and not in a mean way but you were pretty strict about like if you saw someone not rocking you yes. would, you would walk her up to be like hey you know so and so you, you got to keep you, rocking keep, keep that chair moving yeah yeah we would we would allow and of course obviously people have to take a break yeah, here or there breaks food yes and so we would we would make sure that they were allowed you know like a i think it was a a five minute window every hour they could get up and go to the bathroom, grab something to eat. I don't know if it was every hour, maybe every two hours. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we were pretty strict. We would make sure that they were sitting back down when they needed to and back to rocking. If I remember correctly, wasn't it? Uh, so my friend, Eric, who's never been on the podcast, uh, his mom was the one that organized the rockathon, right? Or was that you? Um, it was Chris. Was his I think, name. yeah. And I, she was involved yeah. because we did it for our youth group. Mm-hmm. And so she was she was one of the um, parents that was involved. And I'm trying to think, I mean, we kind of did it as a team. So, yeah, it wasn't just me. It would have been Chris and probably some other uh, parents of the kids. And we'd get together and figure out what we could do. And we all we were the ones that got the food all together and yep. made sure that, you know, there was enough there for everybody to eat and. Um, just kind of, you know, make sure that chaperoning that, that there wasn't any needs or problems or whatever. Was there ever any like, so my memory, cause I was pretty little when I first, uh, went to my first rockathon, I wasn't in the youth group yet. I was too young for it. And I remember one of my first memories of it was this guy named John who was still, he was still in the youth group at the time. And I remember he brought his PlayStation one. And okay. he he brought it there, and uh, I at the time I think I was really hooked on either Sledstorm, like Uncle Brian's Sledstorm, or uh, Medal of Honor, which I played at uh, Mike's house. Mike, uh, you know who I'm talking about, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember John playing it. And he had a PlayStation. I was like, "You have a PlayStation." <laughs> can I play it? And he's like, <laughs> yeah, after I'm done this. And I wanted, all I wanted to do was play. It. And I, I was too little to stay up for the whole thing. I think I was probably like 
maybe like in between eight to ten or something like that. That Too little, too little to stay overnight. And he's like, yeah, when I'm done. But he was playing a game called Gran Turismo, which is a racing game. And listeners might already be laughing because if you're doing like a real race, it's supposed to be a racing sim. Races are 200 laps and 200 laps is a long time in general. But to an eight year old kid, that's an eternity. Uh, I don't think I actually got I remember just sitting next to him watching him play. I'm like, it's going to be done soon. It's going to be done soon. He was on like lap like 40. (laughs) So he still had like three quarters of it to go. Um, And that was my earliest memory of doing the Rockathon. But do you have any specific were there any do you remember any kids misbehaving during the Rockathons? Um, because that's what everyone wants. everyone wants the juicy gossip. Not yeah, just, uh, well, for people I don't, they don't know. I don't remember a lot of misbehaving, but we did have some kids who would they would like take their rocking chairs across the room, you know, mm-hmm. like and rock it across. And <laughs> we were kind of like, guys, you can't be like, this, we're not racing rocking chairs, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the most part, no, they were pretty good. They were pretty good. They knew. But they they all had something that they were interested in doing Mm -hmm. that they were doing while they were rocking. It might have been playing a game, not even just video games, but I I know we had board games and stuff, too, Mm -hmm. for the kids. And some was just, you know, listening to music or talking with friends. What like I because, you know, as an eight year old or however old I was, I couldn't even imagine not playing video games for this because I'm like, what would you do for 24 hours in a rocking chair with except play video games? Like, did people really just talk for a full, like not maybe for the full 24 hours, but like, did people really just like, like how could you even play card games with that? Like you're going or you're rocking against back and forth. Like, all right, every time I get up close, here's a seven rock back, make another card come out. Yeah. I mean, it, it was more challenging than just, Sitting and playing a game, yes, you're definitely right, um, because you were rocking back and forth. I'm trying to remember. I mean, I I do remember them listening to music and just talking. Um, I'm trying to think what some of the other things that they might have done. Oh, I think they made some games as far as, like, throwing balls at each other or <laughs> something like that, you know, like, like you like, kind of, was it kind like, of like four like square state? in a rocking okay. chair. Oh, I could see that. That would be some creative game development. Yeah, I mean, there was things like that 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 we, you know, kind of, they kind of figured out that they could do too. And, uh, but I think that, I think the video games, well, especially for the boys, that was, that was the big thing. The boys were enjoying and some of the girls. Yeah. But, but more so the boys. I mean, those lock-ins, or sorry, those rockathons did eventually turn into lock-ins. Yes. Um, But that wasn't for charity. That was just like a youth event. That was just a youth event. That was just something fun because kids love to stay up all night. So any way you can help them stay up all night. And and the parents don't have to deal with them for a night. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And then the next day they come home exhausted. And And so the parents don't have to deal with them for the next day. (laughs) They get two days off. Exactly. They get to sleep in. That's really funny. Uh, yeah. Do you remember anything about the Rockathons in terms of like what, like any stories that you can think of? If if not, that's okay. Or do you remember any like logistics of, uh, having to organize it? Like, was it, was it difficult to organize or was it pretty straightforward? You like, was it hard to set anything up with the charities? Uh, how much money did you spend on food for these crazy kids? Yeah. Um, boy, it's, I mean, I, it's going back a couple of years. You're going back a while. Yeah. I, I don't remember it being complicated. I, I remember we kept it pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, too, now that I think back, I think we did have at some point in time, we had like a maybe like a little Bible study or like a a, a time teaching time. I, I do remember that. But that was probably only maybe an hour of the time. So that required some preparation. We probably did some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and getting the food and stuff. A lot of parents would chip in and just bring. So it was it was a great kind of thing. Like, you know, we'd have parents bringing, you know, dips and chips. Mm-hmm. And um, we'd probably splur- splurge for pizza because I mean, every kid loves pizza. Who doesn't love pizza? Let's yes, be real. exactly. And even back then, I don't think that's changed <laughs> I don't much. think that's changed. You know, pizza's a I'm not favorite. that old, Mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, 
but I don't remember it being real complicated. Um, and it, a lot of times it was trying to figure out who we wanted to support. But sometimes something sticks in my mind one year, and I don't even know if you were in it at that point or if this was before you. There was a little, there was a young girl who was battling leukemia. Mm. And we raised money for the family to help with things like medical bills. Well, toward, not so much the medical, but the other stuff that's not covered by insurance. Mm. You know, things like parents need for gas because they're running back and forth to the hospital and yeah. things like that. And I do remember we did something, some kind of a fundraiser one year for that. So coming up with the need that we wanted to raise money for um, just depended on what was going on at the time. You know, somebody knew somebody who was going through something yeah, or, yeah. and a lot of times it was more personal ones like that. It was more for an individual person who maybe was battling cancer and had extra expenses or a family who the, the one family I remember in particular, the, the father had been killed in a car accident. Oh, geez. And yeah. so they didn't have, you know, she, the wife was struggling to, you know, figure things out and, and needed help financially. And so, uh, we had found out about that and thought that would be a great, see, this is all the stuff that I did not know about. Like I had no clue that I understood that stuff would go to charity, but I didn't know it was even targeted specifically for some families who would need help. So that's really yeah. cool. I had no More idea. More so. That. I mean, we did do a few charities that were local charities that, you know, um, might have been a um, uh, crisis pregnancy center, might have been um, a, a food bank yeah. type thing. Um, so we had a couple, couple things like that. I think we did a couple years, but I'm not even sure how many years we did it. Um, I because we switched to lock-ins then yeah. too, and they became they weren't really a fundraiser. They were. You also more, ended up doing this isn't gaming related, uh, but it, you would also do like the the like the it wasn't a rock and glow type of thing, like not the midnight bowling, but it was like a it was a similar thing where people would take pledges and you would bowl however many games yes. for the pledge. And I remember that. Yes. Um, shifting gears a little bit. There, the other part I remember of playing games kind of in a communal setting uh, was at our Sunday school picnics that we would have every year. Uh, so once again, for my listeners, what was the Sunday school picnic? Because I remember as a kid, that was always a magical time because it was we had church outside, out at our church's picnic grove, which was always better than being in the stuffy church. And then they would have all these games set up, but like for my for what was it meant? to uh, obviously other than just playing games not even just video games but you know all the carnival style games like what was it meant for well it was really just a time t for the church to come together as a church family and celebrate um just picnic together fellowship together eat together play games together yeah and i think the games to be honest a lot of those games we had what we called our fishing pond. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite because you got you won every time. You got a prize every time, <laughs> and you would you would fish in this little hole, and every time that you, that, there was a it prize was, on it your was hook. Literally, just a, a stick with a rope, a string tied to it. At the bottom of the string was a clothespin. Yes, that you would just dip it into these hole. It, it was literally like. Listeners, it almost kind of looks like an arcade cabinet, sort of. Yeah. But it wasn't as thin as an arcade cabinet. It was pretty, in terms of depth, it, it wasn't nearly as deep as an arcade cabinet, but it was like three arcade cabinets wide, but there's just two holes on each side, uh, one on one on the left, one on the right, and you would put your fishing line down, and there would be some, who, whichever teenager from the youth fellowship got roped into it would have to would just be crouched down for like four hours, just put it grabbing a bag they, they would have one person outside i remember telling them like it's a three-year-old boy <laughs> it's a four-year-old girl or something like that and then yeah. they would have to put on the appropriate bag for the kid yeah. uh and i remember that i remember there was this actually this wasn't I, gaming related i remember winning a pokemon like finger skateboard or oh, pokemon yeah, finger skateboard yeah. but it wasn't from the fish pond it was like from a raffle it was like guess however many oh. you know like whatever's i don't even yeah, remember but yeah. 
uh it, it one of those guessing games but that's what i remember the fishing pond they also eventually had a peanut scramble yes. there was an awesome dunk tank that was clearly not bought that was clearly made probably like it, it, it basically a redneck duck tank dunk yes tank. it was pretty much <laughs> <laughs> it was very like the the lining of it was clearly just like painter sheets like the plastic <laughs> painter liner that they put on the floors to like prevent drips yes. that's what i remember it being though. yes it was it, that's exactly <laughs> what it was and eventually it got dismantled because it oh was, it, was, it was falling into it was fall, yeah it was falling apart but we did those kind of games and it got to the point that kids because video gaming was becoming such a popular thing yeah we you know we were getting less and less kids at the picnic and we thought maybe if we set up a video game thing it didn't, that they could come up and I play like video I, game at the So you tasked at, me with doing this, which yes, I love. I think I love you did. All, now I will say I think I did a disservice to you all because I would always bring all the single player games so I could show people the pretty graphics, which is the complete opposite of what it was supposed to be. It's supposed to be this communal here, here's four controllers. Let's all play games together. Smash Brothers, Goldeneye, though it is kind of weird we brought a first person shooter to uh church picnic now that i think about it um especially now with uh, never mind that's gonna get dark real fast we're gonna leave it leave it there but uh i remember bringing all those games and that's why i wanted to ask you about the church picnic because that yeah. this is the second yeah. this those were my memories of it it was the second uh that was kind of like uh this and the rockathon were kind of happening around the same time mm -hmm. in my life. Obviously, it never happened on the same day, or right. like even. I mean, I don't. I, would, I don't remember when rockathons were. I remember the Sunday school picnic was in the summer. You yes. would always have that at the summer at the end of the Sunday school season, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, I remember the dunk tank. I remember the peanut scramble. I remember guessing the thingers. I the guess you know how guessing how many candies are in a jar. Yes. Um, yeah. Fish pond. I know there was others. I know there were. We other played games. bingo. We did have a bingo thing where you I remember could win that. prizes playing bingo. We did that. Um, we we did, we also had things like play volleyball mm -hmm. and and um, horseshoes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Cornhole wasn't a thing back then, but we had bean bags, which was basically cornhole. Yeah, the old school yeah, cornhole. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that that changed in time, but we had all those games set up. But the video games was something that we thought maybe we could attract some of the teenagers and some of the younger kids to come to the picnic and to keep keep the families, you know, yeah. all coming. Because as the kids got older, they were like, ah, I don't want to go to that stuff. I want to yeah. game with my friends. So. We thought if we could bring gaming to the picnic. And of course, I was a little kid that the teenagers probably didn't want to hang out with because I was like 12. So like, why would I play video games with this 12 year old? And he's the one hogging the system. I feel like I really kind of screwed <laughs> over your whole idea unintentionally, but I'm pretty sure I ruined it. <laughs> I, I never looked at it that way. I thought I, I just like I figured it, it was just not meant to be. But um, but and I think for parents back then. Because the gaming was so new. I don't want to say new, but it was... It wasn't new, but... It, it, it was becoming so much more popular that yeah. kids were doing it all the time, playing video games. Parents were worried about what those games would do mm -hmm. to their kids. You know, like, what kind of things is this teaching my child? Yeah. And they were very worried about some of those things. So if we could kind of bring it into more of a friendly atmosphere... Mm -hmm. where parents could see what was going on and what they were doing, it might make it more more acceptable and well, that it would more might... comfortable with it. Yes, more parents would be more comfortable with it and the kids would want to come out to things yeah. because it's they're doing something they enjoy doing. So um, so that was kind of kind of the hope um that we would get from i don't i don't think you messed it up i think i i'm gonna take the blame for it and i know <laughs> that i know you're not giving i know you're not putting on me but i'm gonna take the blame for that yeah. one i i because i remember playing a lot of zelda there that which is not a uh, multiplayer game okay. that's not that, that was i i remember wanting to just show people like look how good this looks and you know being 12 you don't really it, you're still so absorbed in your own world you don't realize 
you know, not everyone likes the same things you do versus meanwhile, as I'm told, like, can you not see it's <laughs> Zelda there? Look at the graphics. There's there's a sword and it's all green. Look how big this field is. Look, his, that looks like a real human. You don't see. And, and you know, now it's laughable compared to like what it was, but it's still kind of amusing. Yeah. Um, yeah, since I would always play Zelda, I feel like I kind of ruined the purpose of it. You know, it, if I would have played Smash Brothers or, uh, I mean, heck, even Donkey Kong 64, which we had had four player multiplayer on it. Um, I feel like that would have fit the purpose that you were trying. But I didn't know the purpose to me. It's like, I'm allowed to bring my video games to church. <laughs> what? This is the best day of my life. <laughs> And I think you weren't the only one. I think there were some others that I brought. don't. I feel like I was the only one that brought anything. I really? remember. I remember be, like this was my job. I would bring the TV. <laughs> I would have everything set up. I wrote my name on the back of all the cartridges. So that way no one would take them, even though I was the only one bringing games. So if anyone walked out with it, they knew it was mine. But yeah. whatever. Um, no, I, I, it was, I, I loved it. I just, I don't necessarily feel, I mean, I feel bad, but like, I, I at the same time, I, I'm not surprised I was 12 years old. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, that's not like, that's, that's a very 12, yeah. 13 year old thing to, to do and think. Um, so I want to move on to kind of like the last bit of memories that I, I wanted to talk about with this. Uh, so you've experienced a lot of my gaming phases. You saw me at Rockathons wanting to dying watching someone play gran turismo for 200 freaking laps um and then obviously all the stuff at church picnics but now the last thing was halo parties uh i had i got obsessed with halo uh when i was uh you know shortly after it came out. i remember for my sweet 16 because yeah, that's right i had a sweet 16 you're all jealous um that i don't know if we called it sweet but no it was, just <laughs> it was my 16th birthday it, you treated it as that though like it wasn't yeah. like the stereotypical like what the connotation of sweet 16 but it was supposed to be like your my sweet 16 and i remember i could either bring 10 friends to rock and glow or we could have a party at the house and i could have an xbox i'm like i'm going with that party at the house and i'm having an xbox and uh that started, I remember playing Halo at my 16th birthday party with like Eric and a bunch of other friends, Justin, and Justin, everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, Doug? Doug. Oh, remember my gosh. Doug was yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we have a picture somewhere. And then I started getting into Halo 2 after that had come out. And I started throwing Halo parties here. I remember having uh, stuff up, like, uh, you know, people up here in the living room where we're recording this and then down in the basement and like, multiple different That's rooms right. and everything so i wanted to ask you because i'm going to be talking a lot about the memories with cj in the next segment after this about specific memories of the game so i'm going to save that from my half um but what do you remember as the person who had to be put up with like 14 obnoxiously loud teenagers and young adults screaming at each other while eating pizza and playing halo <laughs> i actually loved it really i really did i loved that you wanted to have your friends here and you were in the house and we were hanging out. And I mean, yes, your father and I weren't in the room doing <laughs> stuff with you, but we knew you guys were enjoying yourselves. And I, I really liked that we had, you know, that we had people over and you could have your friends over and really enjoy playing the games together. Plus, then I knew what was going on. Uh, that's true. I, I, I was present. You have, you have anxiety like me. So that, that bit of like, <laughs> you were never, just to be clear, listeners, she was never, you were never a controlling mom. Like you, I've never, I never felt that with you. Um, And so, but that's I, good to hear. But I know deep down inside, because I feel similarly in terms of anxiety, you didn't want to be controlling, but it was, a t it was definitely like you um leaned towards mm -hmm, it. You wanted yes. to lean towards it. You just have to like, I, I can't say for certain because I don't want to put words in your mouth, but in my mind for with my own daughter, I don't want like I definitely lean towards controlling, but I have to pu pull myself back to be like, I'm, I'm being too possessive right now. I'm being too helicoptery. Yeah. Um, so you were but you were never like that, at least not from my recollection. Well, I try not to be. You never and that were. that was the, the the thing, because as much as you wanted to make sure that everything was safe and good and, you know, you sometimes had to step back and. Your dad was real good with that because he would be able to kind of 
walk me off the cliff. Even out, even out your anxiety. <laughs> Back me bit. off yeah, the cliff yeah. and say, no, no, it's okay. And you let him go, you know. So I guess it's yeah. good. So you, that's interesting to me. I figured that it would have been obnoxious to have mm. like, I mean, we were loud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then you got to remember you had a brother who was a drummer. So that's very true. loud. We were used to loud. And that's very true. I mean, his came along later, but. Well, I, um, my, I'm going to probably tell this story again in the next segment. If I, if I may, in case I don't, I'll tell it here. I still remember um, we were playing Halo 1. And Halo 1, Mom, I know you don't know much about the game, but whenever you, a lot of times you can create a profile so you can select your name, choose the color of your armor and all this other stuff. But if you just select a default name, if you literally select default as like you don't type in a name, you just select the profile of default, um, it gives you a random color and it gives you a random name. Uh, In Halo, actually in Halo 1, there was usually like red and blue, but in general, the, the color doesn't matter. Um they would give you a random name. So instead of, you know, like, uh, you know, like if you wanted your gamer tag to be like swoony or something like that, like that's a completely made up one. That's what you would type in. But if you choose default, the game would pick it for you. And they have a preset number of ones that were all just like the big L was one. No idea what context they decided the game developers decided to put that in. There was the big L, the bear, stumpy, uh, like really funny, goofy names. And one was just Howard. <laughs> no last name just howard and so whoever howard was i don't remember who it was i want to say we were down in the basement and howard whoever howard was was also down in the basement because we had the like one team all together down in the basement with the land party with the with the ethernet cable going up to the group upstairs to connect all the xboxes up upstairs and mike my brother was up here and at one point in the game uh this ties the reason i'm telling this because it ties back with us being loud because whoever howard was kept killing mike in halo and so what happens you would see on the screen you know like howard killed mike howard killed mike or mike killed by howard whatever mike's uh, username was i forget what his was and after like the eighth time in a span of like 20 minutes i just hear this screech from upstairs Howard just losing his mind because Howard had killed him the, the eighth time in like 20 minutes and just the disembodied yell it was one of the funny I remember everyone just lost it down in the basement it was one of the funniest things um but yeah so I I don't do you have any other recollections like was it easier to get to know my friends that way too or like people that I hung out with yeah yeah and I I think I always liked with all of the boys. I always liked that your friends would come here and we would get to know them. And, um, I, that was just, I don't know. That was just fun. It was fun having, and I, I like having people over. Mm -hmm. So when my boys wanted to have people over, it was like, Oh yeah, have your friends over. We'll hang out. You guys can hang out and you know, it's a safe place. You can have fun and you know, we, we know you'll, you'll be okay. Well, I am very grateful for it. Um, and that's all really the questions I had for you for this. Uh, so I, w- I should I should just make real one quick comment with all yeah. this with video games um, <laughs> that your mother really can't play video games. I tried to show you Donkey Kong 64. Yeah. And I tried to get you to play it. No. no. no but now, I, in I, your, in I am your not defense, good. In your defense, Mom, I tried to show you Donkey Kong 64, which uh, is a 3D platformer. And, you know, as an adult now, as a kid, I took to it like water. But as an adult, you know, I've been doing this podcast for a number of years. I, I'd like to say I know video games pretty well. Um, N64, while I still love it, it's very hard to grasp. Even for, like, kids playing games now take out the graphics it's hard for them to play n64 games because the the physics of the 3d games was all janky the camera is all funky like it's very difficult to figure out what to do in a 3d space and in fact there was a i don't know if it was a stud i mean you can look at the sales numbers like mario games the most popular games that nintendo made as the games went 3d their sales numbers decreased because it lost Mm -hmm. a whole bunch of people because thinking in 2d is a lot easier than having to suddenly think in a 3d space Uh. and with you having absolutely no experience in playing games i threw you into the deep end 
And then I remember as a kid, like, what? Just do this. And you're like, I, 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 I get it. I understand. <laughs> so don't sell yourself short. I gave you a really hard game to like try to understand. <laughs> and most people would be like, why would you do that to her? <laughs> so, no, I just, I, I know when way back when you did um, the, the dancing one, DDR, you know, DDR. Yeah. If I didn't have somebody with me, I would just, it would end because I, <laughs> I did so poorly and I just well, was I'm, never coordinated enough. I, I don't think, I think you've, you need real coordination to do gaming. And I didn't have the coordination to do it. And I I feel like I it, maybe would have learned if I Yeah, but it's like did but, you have time? You're a you're a yeah, parent. I, I yeah. I'm a parent now. I don't have time for anything. Yeah. I for the this podcast, we're recording this we came over to your place for dinner. My wife and kid went home. And I'm here with you recording this because this is the only time I get a chance to record. So could I be playing games? Could I be practicing a new skill? Not at the moment. So because yeah. I even if I didn't have this podcast, I would be doing housework. I would be doing uh, something else. So um, no, yeah. I, I totally get it. But I'm always grateful for uh, everything. Like I fell in love with gaming largely in part because you guys allowed me to. So I'm always very grateful for that. And look at me now, Ma. I'm a, <laughs> a podcaster who loses money on the show. <laughs> 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 but you're loving it. I do love it. Um, so thank you so much for joining me, Mom. This was really fun to talk and reminisce about uh, growing up and uh, just some of the stuff where I would game in a communal space. I Like like I said, I don't really know what else to describe this as because it's like not really like a land party at the church stuff. It wasn't like a big local area, like a people connecting right. systems together. It was just kind of like people hanging out and kind of ha having this community event where gaming was involved to kind of like this public space. So, uh, but yeah, no, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this was a lot of fun. And, uh, it was I, fun. I, if you ever want to, I, I don't know who knows, maybe I'll have you on for a bonus episode to reminisce more about that. I keep all the extra, extra personal stuff behind over on Patreon. So <laughs> sounds good. So, all right. Thank you. You're welcome. segment in this little journey through my gaming memories is with my buddy CJ who I threw a lot of Halo parties with. Um, I actually got CJ into Halo and a lot of LAN party stuff and he was really good with uh, network networking not in terms of a social sense but in more of the literal technical sense of connecting systems and computers and whatnot so he helped me out a lot with that but yeah we're kind of going through a little bit semi chronologically as you heard with the last segment with my mom we talk a smidge on halo parties and my hanging out with cj kind of began a little bit before that technically chronologically but it's around the same time so it's all over the place but yeah so here is my chat with my good friend cj all about our memories with halo 2 land parties and xbox live So, CJ, uh, I invited you on to talk about land parties because out of all my friends that I've that I have known over the years, I probably spent the most time with you playing video games in like a land party setting and even just kind of like a party setting. So, you know, like between our Halo 2 parties, Halo 3, uh, RTS, all this stuff, we'll get into all that. But before we kind of talk about our specific memories, I really wanted to ask you just some about some of yours. Like, um, well, first off, say hi to everybody. Hi everyone, I'm CJ. Hey everyone, this is CJ. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, I want to talk to you about your specific memories. You know, uh, 
we 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 go back a good number of years i I was we were talking off mic until i reached out to you we haven't spoken a long time so this was kind of this is fun for me because we're getting to catch up for the first time in pretty much a decade and also get to reminisce about some of like all like the fun stuff we you know all the games we used to play and everything so i i've you know, rambled on long enough. CJ, uh, what's some of your first earliest like memories of multiplayer gaming and LAN parties and all those shenanigans? Yeah. So when you first reached out, it's just like you got me thinking back, you know, as you said, we haven't talked in like A years yeah. and it's not things that I've actively thought about recently. So now it's like, okay, how did this all start? Like, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And one thing that really came out was, you know, the first time I came over to a Halo party at your house Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just like unsure of who everyone was there, walked in, looked around, you know, your living room, you had two TVs set up, couches back to back (laughs) and then keep going in. It's just like, wait you have more downstairs, right? You had cables running downstairs, another set of like two or three TVs and a bunch of people down there. It's like, whoa. And um, I I will always remember, you also had like a hole in your floor where we could look down at the people. It was a tiny little hole just to like, uh, for the the (laughs) wire to go through the ethernet cord, yeah. But it was big enough to remember that you can like poke your head down and see the people. Well, you couldn't yell it, it was, them. it was very tiny, but yeah, you could like, if you wanted to, you could peer down with your eye. <laughs> uh, that, that setup, dude, I will never forget this. I don't remember which I mean, we, we had a bunch at my place and at your place. Um, but I'll never forget this story where, um, Mike, my brother was there and he was playing and somebody remember in halo one where if you pick default, it would just give you some random ass name it was like the bear, Stumpy, the big L. Do you remember all those like random generated names? I don't names? really remember that. Well, one of them was just Howard. You would just be <laughs> called Howard. And whoever Howard was, it might have been you because you you were you were a better Halo player than I player than I was. I know I I got pretty good, but you everyone that I would introduce to the game, whether it was you or someone else, always got better than me, no matter <laughs> no matter what. And that's. I, I, it's probably about 15 years too late, but I apologize for any angry outbursts that I had during the many Halo parties. I still get self-conscious about it. But in any case, so with Howard, whoever that was, whether it was you or someone else, kept killing my brother, kept killing him over and over and over (laughs) again. And you remember when, you know, someone in the screen and in the multiplayer matches, it'd be like, so-and-so killed so-and-so, so-and-so in Halo 2, they changed up the verbs, would be like stuck so-and-so, splattered so-and-so. But in Halo 1, it was just like the name so and so and so and so um so whatever mike's name i forget what it was i'll just say it was mike for the sake of ease it was was mike was killed by howard howard killed mike howard killed mike again or something like that and after like the fifth or sixth maybe even eighth time in the span of like i don't know maybe 20 minutes within one match i think we were downstairs and michael was upstairs and you hear this blood curdling stream just oh, just losing his mind because whoever Howard was had killed him like eight times in a row. <laughs> That's funny. And yeah, Halo, the original Halo one was definitely, you know, something because you could be sniping someone with an assault rifle from halfway across the map. <laughs> the pistol too. Remember and the, the, the pistol was literally a sniper shots. rifle. Bam, right? bam, bam, done. Yeah. And like the pistol was easier to maneuver than a sniper rifle. It was. And, well, most people, I remember one of your techniques uh, would be to aim with the sniper rifle, switch over to the pistol because you're, there's no breathing. So it's not like the, your it's not like your sight would move your, the aiming reticule would move. So you would aim with the pistol for the head and then switch to the pistol without touching the joystick. It just bam, 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 <laughs> three <laughs> pistol shots. So you didn't have to waste a sniper shot. And if someone was standing still or they were AFK or something, well, away from controller AFC. I don't know. Um, You could just take him out like that. Right. Or the player is just standing around trying to figure out how to move. (laughs) Oh, those are the best. Easy, easy points. Easy points. But, but yeah, so your first memory is going to one of my Halo parties then. Yeah. So you, before that I was a PlayStation player and I've never played Halo. And then, you know, we met up and you're like, Hey, I'm having a Halo party come over. And yeah, I loved it after the, first party and you know you invited me over to a couple more and it turned into like 
me asking my parents, hey, I would like an Xbox for Christmas. And if I remember correctly, it's like the Xbox 360 had already came out. Mm -hmm. And I told him, it's just like, no, I want the original Xbox, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's what uh, Josh is playing with. It's Halo's I on I didn't know in. that you got that because, yeah, because I didn't get my Xbox until after the 360 came out as well. I got it for my 16th birthday, actually. Yeah, I, I was a... I had a PlayStation and then a PlayStation 2 for the longest time. And then I got introduced to Halo and, you know, it was only on the Xbox. It's, so it's funny. My first memory of playing multiplayer games with you was pre Halo. It was actually, it was Medal of Honor Allied Assault or uh, not Allied Assault. I'm sorry. Medal of Honor European Assault or like one of the ones on the PS2. And you used to play it online. You used to play like Splinter Cell and other stuff online. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. And we were at a church conference, like one of the like the four C's, like we helped out with the vacation Bible school at like a big conference there. And you brought your PS2 and we played multiplayer on it. It was only like split screen two player, but still you had it set up in our room and we or maybe your room. I don't know if we even I don't remember yeah. if we shared it. I don't think we would have, but I remember that, and then I re then I remember introducing you to Halo and all that other stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah, I was a big PlayStation Two player, and yeah, I got into the, all the World War Two games, the Medal of Honor's, the uh, Call of Duties. Mm -hmm. uh, I was huge in Splinter Cell. I was playing the Splinter Cell, um, Chaos Theory, and Pandora Tomorrow online. There's somewhere over people. there too. Somewhere over there on my sh on my shelf. Like I I loved it because. I love the stealth games and, you know, the big thing with them is understanding how people work and how can I make them think I'm going to do something, but actually, you know. No wonder you were so good at Halo. Like, see, you, I never you, thought You that have to ahead. understand the way people were going to think and get them to think one way and do the opposite. Because Splinter Cell, the only way, like, when you're the... Um, you know, the spies, you need to kill the mercenaries or accomplish See, I didn't even a task. Know Splinter Cell had multiplayer. It, it, uh, Pandora Tomorrow, right? And okay. Chaos Theory and Up had multiplayer. And the big thing was with that was spies were non lethal, right? Your only ways to kill a mercenary was to run around, grab them from the back, break their neck. I so, know it's what, morbid. But. Okay, so they are lethal, just not right, from, but from, like a they, front. their gun is a shotgun, like shock. Oh, like a shock, static. not a yeah. shot. Not a, a shock. shot, a shock. <laughs> With a K CK. So Go on. <laughs> your only way of killing mercenaries was to, you know, run behind them or jump on them twice, right? When you jump, jump on them. Yeah. When you jump on them, they pass out. They lose half their health. <laughs> and then you jump on them again if they're half health and then they... Sorry, it's just life. the idea of it, jumping on someone and they're like, I've fallen and I can't get up. Yeah, you, you knock them out. <laughs> so the big thing with that, right, is I got to get them to look one way so I can run the other and come behind them. No so, wonder you're so good at Halo, man. It's like I, yeah. I've never been good at strategy like that. I can't think two steps ahead for the life of me. That's why I only play against bots in like RTS games and other stuff because they don't think two steps ahead because they're programmed <laughs> not to. Uh, so it, or less depending on the difficulty you set the bot to. Um, yeah. And yeah, bots are pretty predictable. Exactly. Then, That's why I like them. <laughs> <laughs> same thing with like Halo, right? You gotta you gotta watch where someone's gonna run to throw a sticky in front of them so it slaps them in the face. Man, <laughs> I should have just freaking like, you know, for, like Wayne Gretzky, you know, don't look at the puck, you look at where the puck's going to be. And it's same idea right. with a uh same idea with Halo. So with with the Halo multiplayer stuff, so you came over to my place, discovered Halo um converted to an xbox gamer one of my memories too and this isn't necessarily with land parties but it is involving our halo 2 experience specifically because halo 1 i remember we played initially and then we all got onto halo 2 and that was like the big thing and then you really got sunk your teeth into three i couldn't get into it and i don't i think it's because i didn't own a 360 and so i think part of me was being a hipster and be like uh, it's not as good as everyone says it is man you know <laughs> not wanting to admit i also i i because the th three had the addition of the different types of grenades like the shield draining grenade and then the shield like extra bubble shield grenade and stuff like that and i remember when i first played it over at like your place at one of your parties i remember just not enjoying it i think it was more hipster uh more it, of a hipster it was mentality. definitely more like modern yeah I, I just for some reason i didn't 
I, I think it was a combination of just like, man, I wish I could get a 360 and also like this isn't Halo 2 and Halo 2 is what I'm good at. And this the mechanics in this are so different than what I'm good at. So I, I felt at a disadvantage compared to the friends you would play with. But in Halo 2, there's so many memories that I have surrounding this game, dude. So first off, you introduced me to the world of Xbox Live. Uh, the only time I've ever played on Xbox. Oh, sorry. The second I've only played on Xbox Live one other time since then when the three I played Halo 4 online like once. But prior to that is because you gave me an Xbox Live account. Do you remember the name of that Xbox Live account? No, I don't. Do you remember bridging? Bridging? Yeah. Do you remember being a bridger? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. you don't worry. You're not going to be. You know what your last name is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> CJ here had a nice little business going on where you would. Bri so bridging listeners is when you basically feed your Xbox connection through a PC and you turn off the connection rapidly on and off, which causes <laughs> everyone to lag you seem very self-conscious about this I can no no, no. I'll, I'll be fully honest like i i drank the gaming potion and like going back even to the playstation days um with splinter cell and all that uh it was a lag switch was yeah. what it was back then and i i had I found out that I had to be directly connected to the modem. So no router could be in between because I needed a quick reconnect if anything oh, failed. Oh, I didn't know and that. Okay. Cutting connection uh, between me and the router, it took too long to reconnect and I would end up getting disconnected from games. So I would have to work with my family and be like, hey, can I steal the internet for <laughs> like an hour? And <laughs> to to be fully honest, I had the support of my father on this because he built me a lag switch, which was which was just what? two network ports in this little white box with a switch, right wow. on and off, right. And he built this for me, and I would sit at my chair with this little white box between my legs, playing. <laughs> You don't uh, flip it uh, quickly, but in Splinter Cell, you make sure you're hosting the game, wow. right? Because now your your box is the host, and whatever happens on the host happens, right? You yeah. flip the switch off, you go run, you go kill the guy, finish your task, flip it back on. They lagged for whatever reason. They reconnect for whatever reason. For whatever reason, <laughs> you know, only because they're connecting so, to your Xbox, yeah, right? And that was your, the PlayStation system. day. So now getting into bridging, which was um, more the Xbox era, where as mentioned, you connect your Xbox through your PC, and then your PC. Um, I don't think I had the restriction of having to go straight to the modem with that. I just needed to be host and the PC actually ran a firewall system that had, there is another program out there that would actually start controlling the firewall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most firewalls have like how, how tight of security do you want off low, medium or high? And so you would actually put your, all your friends IP address. Once again, there's this other program that would listen to all the <laughs> Halo IPs coming through oh, so you can okay. see them and you whitelist them in your firewall program. And the program, went, wow. once your game started, um, there's a way to force yourself host yeah, by because, disconnecting yourself. Because and, you had the weakest connection. So they the game's right. code would be basically like, well, since they have the weakest connection going out, let's have everyone connect to them and they can host the game on their Xbox. Right, because I could only connect to certain people yeah. uh, during the launching of the game. There would actually create the phenomenon of actually two hosts right okay there's two hosts but technically i was a host too so um it kind of focused and allowed me to do this and then you just start the lag program and it switches the firewall between high blocking everyone else's connection you do that for two seconds and then bring it back down to like medium for like three or five seconds because you need to give everyone time to reconnect and they're you know, they would just be running into walls and you go beat them in the back. You 
and win I, the game. So what you did, you had a whole thing, or for what I remember, you would bridge other people and they would pay you an Xbox Live gift cards. So that way you wouldn't have to pay for Xbox Live ever. I remember you had it like a year or something where you didn't pay at all because you would bridge, you would have a specific account for bridging and then you would have your account for like legitimate play. Um, yeah, because Bungie would bring down the uh, ban hammer as it was called back then. I brought <laughs> all of this up because the you gave me an account that had one of the free three month trials or whatever or one one month things or whatever and it was called i lag you lag <laughs> and so while i did no bridging and none of the other quote unquote this is all alleged people alleged <laughs> even though he said i a whole bunch of times it's alleged uh, <laughs> uh I, I, it wasn't illegal it was fine but it was uh anytime i would do well people thought i was cheating because my name was I lag you lag. So even all of my accomplishments that I got on Xbox Live, I couldn't enjoy because everyone thought I was cheating. It was, I, and I mean that it made me laugh so hard even back then. It was one of my, I had a match. I remember it was like all snipers and I went like 18 and one or something like that. I had like an insane run and I was this close to finishing it. And then someone got me and I, I it was, it was a bummer, but uh, yeah. no, a- anyone hooked me up on Xbox live for, for that was the only, and I had a lot of fun with it, but that was also back when my, my parents had DSL and not like broadband. It like, it was kind of broadband internet, but it was still broadband internet that went through your phone line as opposed to its own separate line. Right. So I, in order for me to play Halo online with the I like you like account, I had to be like, hey, mom, can I use the phone line for like <laughs> a few hours? And she's like, all right, as long as it's between this time and this time, because we don't normally receive calls then anyway. Um, so I had to bring that up during this because I know it's not, it's like kind of tangentially connected to the land party stuff. Um, but I had to talk to you about it because it was one of my favorite memories. But I'll, I'll expand because, you know, even before I got into Xbox Live and everything and, you know, it was probably junior high or something, no money without mm-hmm. your parents' support. Um, I, I was still trying to find other ways to get online and I came across this thing. It was called Xbox Connect. I right. remember you trying that, yeah. Yeah, you you ran this program through a PC on your network, and it kind of inter- uh, treated itself as the Xbox network. And anyone running Xbox Connect, it can kind of created its own Xbox Live network. Mm-hmm. So you weren't on Xbox Live, but you're on kind of like a clone of it. Right, you're on you're on like a separate network. Um, it was very slow though, and lots of complications connecting to games, but. You know, I tried it. Yeah, that's still really cool, though. Um, bringing it back to the LAN party specifically, one of the other things that we did a lot at our LAN parties and like one of my favorite elements was, well, actually, or it was annoying at the time, but it's kind of like a, a good memory now. The Halo 2 map pack. It was an installation disc that if you had <laughs> Halo 2 installed, if you had Halo 2 on your Xbox, you couldn't get this Halo 2. You had to buy a separate disc. And you can install it on your Xbox. Now, here's the thing, though. It, it's not like there's any DRM. Any As long as one person had the disc, you could pass it around to everyone and install the map pack on your Xbox. Um, and I also remember you found a, there was a you could install custom made mod, modded games. That's how we got some of the more interesting games, not zombies. Zombies was the only thing. We'll talk about zombies. Yeah. We, we mentioned it a bit off mic, but like... Um, there was that one game, I think, oh my gosh, what was it called? It was a version of Juggernaut where everyone was invisible except for the Juggernaut. And they were like super health, the super shield. Like, they, you know, they had the extra shield, They but they only had a sword. Everyone else had pistols. Uh, in, Halo, in Halo 2's pistols were a lot weaker than 1. Still powerful, but nowhere near as powerful as Halo 1's pistol. And... um it, or maybe it was battle rifles they all had. I can't remember. But everyone was in, it was called hide and seek. That was the name of the game. Yeah. And so you would have to pick places to hide, and you could theoretically take out the the juggernaut who had everything if you could sneak up behind them and melee them. But you don't have radars, and the juggernaut does. If you remember that. Yeah, you had to be very sneaky. <laughs> and the juggernaut also could run faster than you. Like you can sneak under the radar, but you have to crouch to do that. 
And when you're crouched, you are very susceptible. You're not going to catch up to him. You have to time your attack perfectly. So that was a really fun mini game. There's also other stuff like, um, oh my gosh. There's the annoying one called Don't Kill Yourself, where it was all rockets. And in the event that you accidentally committed suicide, you had like a 999,000 <laughs> second respawn. <laughs> People got pissed <laughs> dude and speaking of one of the other games we played a lot the all rockets thing remember in halo we we in, in some of the land parties we would switch back to halo one for one game type it you would play it on the level the longest which ironically was actually the smallest level in halo one multiplayer um and we put infinite grenades and all rockets on and the longest remember it's just two hallways with like uh like upper levels on either side right. but like that's and so you would we would cram for it, the level was designed for i think four to six players at most we crammed 14 on it one time and the system couldn't handle all the explosions because yeah, it's having to that. render everything there are grenade you had infinite grenades so you, there was no reason to just not constantly be chucking grenades at people stickies doesn't doesn't matter and it's funny where like stickies were great for when you could see the person but if you didn't know you went with frags because they ricocheted around and you could get around corners that you couldn't get with a sticky mm -hmm. um it was awesome one of the most fun game experiences ever also in halo 2 this one was not a custom mod but tower of power which you could only play on ascension right. that was where no one had any shields and there's one turret and you have to try to see who can take control of that turret as who who can take control of the tower as quick as easily as possible? Right, and it was only shotguns and swords. It, it I think was, I think it was just shotguns. Even. Yeah, um, and then that led to the whole thing of like, can you even? There's only one entrance that was not guarded, and some people were super like daring. Well, if if they if the gunner was distracted on the turret, you could sneak in the front entrance, but it was very risky to do so. Yeah, and if you did teams or had people team up. Mm -hmm. with, even without teams you had one person on the turret and then one person like nudged in that itty bitty corner right on the stairwell yep. so you couldn't like they would see you before you you saw them and they were in close enough range that one shotgun just like killed you right so like you had to jump around the corner and try and get them first well and do you remember there was like a secret way to like you and i once you understood where it was at like all the professional or the really good halo players yeah knew the about super it. bounce location no not the super or... well the super bounce yes <laughs> but i was going to get to that but there's a in tower power specifically there's like because there's two entrances to that tower there's the one that you will be killed immediately because the turret can see you and there's the other that the turret can't reach and so you'd always go to that one and it was a walkway and so all the all the all the guys were like jumping from the top of the tower like coming down trying to shotgun you at the last second before they got to you but uh what you could do though instead of going up the main entrance if you jump onto the railing on the left and there it was a like a little it was wide enough that you could stand on and you could go around the outside of the tower and hop up. Do you remember that? Not really. You know what? After we're done Maybe. recording, I have Halo 2 right here. We're going to boot that up and we're going to play some Halo 2. Well, we'll just dick around it at least. <laughs> um, but, you know, leading off to another thing that you mentioned, the the super jumps. Why don't you talk a bit about the super jumps? Right, so... I I think you were probably the one that introduced me. I think you showed them to me. I or don't, maybe. I, I don't I, remember anymore. All I, I know remember. is that you and I practiced them. We would hang out and just practice super jumps for yeah, hours. Because uh, the Ascension was definitely the big one, you know, mm -hmm. having to walk up the ramp, you know walk into this corner for like three seconds come out don't hit anything right once you hit something it's like game over you got to walk around to this one rock part and then jump on this crack mm -hmm. <laughs> and then right as you you have to jump down crouch and then jump and you're bounce all the way to the top of the tower. If you got the right. If you got it right. There is also times where you got it half right and did like a mini super bounce. And sometimes that would kill you because and, it would yeah, propel you off the level. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a lot of uh, practice on that one. And Well, there was also ones on Zanzibar. Yeah. There was also ones on Ascension. Uh, no, Ascension was on the... There's like... There was one that we would always play zombie on. Remember? The, the one zombie level... Uh, there, yeah, the, there's the a, one there's, in the town. 
right? No, that's I think that's Zanzibar, but there's one maybe not Zanzibar. No, Zanzibar has the, the, the wheel, big yeah. wheel. No, there's one where it's called I can't remember what it's called, but it was essentially like a like a circular room and there's four like ancillary rooms on the outside. Yeah, that one. And you yeah, always I remember and what one. we would all do is you would move all the objects in the one room to the door frame but that was your barricade so the zombies couldn't get in they would have to jump over stuff and they get stuck and you're just like gotta shoot them gotta shoot them and it was by the end of it it was like three people left just like hoping that they make it yeah and you're running out of ammo <laughs> and eventually you just have to hope that you can like dodge and melee everything it was awesome um yeah, no, so, like, uh, the super jumps were great. We did a lot, of, like, so many fun times with, with the Halo Land parties. Now, talk about some of the ones that you threw, though. Like, we talked about the ones that I threw at my house where, you know, we had the wire going down between the upstairs and downstairs. You know, t- tube TVs everywhere until we all got the 360, and then we could put it all on into a HGTV. I'm pretty sure one of the last ones that I – went to your place i could just bring like something like this 24 inch tv right here and that was so much easier than lug we would lug around tube tvs all the time and anyone who had like a small one was like a god because it was like the easiest thing to you like they could just bring their their xbox and like a little like 20 inch uh tube tv which was still heavy but nothing compared to like like yeah. a 36 I, I i remember carrying around a 20 inch dinosaur monster and it had handles at the top and it's just like bouncing against me as i'm carrying this because mm-hmm. it was so heavy but it was the only tv i had at the time um but yeah at my house i remember um so i was a computer networking guy and still are still are yeah, yeah. and um i ended up hosting so many of these parties that mm-hmm. I just had a plastic bag of, you know, routers, switches, hubs, network cables, extension cords, you name it. And I called it my bag of tricks, right? Oh, so when okay. it, whenever anyone came over and it's just like, here, let me go get my bag of tricks. And I had everything we needed. And um, yeah, we, I hosted, we had like a, a great room which was a living room with like an open kitchen set up. And we had um, four to six TVs set up in there. And then there was like a, like a side room. I remember where usually the dog slept, but you could, I mean, yeah, it was like probably our old dining room. I don't know if you, I feel like it was next to the, I guess. Yeah. It was our our old front living room. It was, it was right next to the, I still remember kind of the layout of your house there, like the front living room. And then there was another room, which I remember all the dog beds were in. I feel like that was kind of like, maybe it wasn't dog. I think that was your dining area though. I don't remember, but then you go to the right and that was the full open kitchen that you're talking about. Right. And yeah, we, you know, I had massive network cables. I can make whatever we needed as well. And yeah, yeah, Started inviting my uh, high school or, you know, school friends over. You came over as well. We got together whatever we could. And, um, yeah, it it turned into, you know, I enjoyed it so much. It was Halo parties. Then it turned into birthday parties. Then it turned into (laughs) all-nighters. And um, we would play until, you know, like 2 or 3 in the morning crashing even switching, I, I remember one of the all-nighter parties we had. It was like 3 a.m. And we were trying to get through the second level of uh, Call of Duty 3 on veteran mode. Okay. Like running. It was one of these, like, you got to follow a tank through a field and they're just blasting at you. And, you know, it's veteran. You can't poke your head out. And, like, you have to just crawl. And it was death every two seconds. <laughs> it was miserable. And, uh, like... You know, three quarters of the party's already passed out on the floor. We had like so much Mountain Dew going, you know. And it's just like, you, you know what? Let's just go to bed. I hope none of us got diabetes from this. <laughs> I drank so much soda in high school and college. Like, I used to, and this, I'll get back to land parties in a moment, but I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft and I would play it. And I would have literally three 12 packs of Mountain Dew next to me with different flavors. I wouldn't go through them all in a night. Don't worry, listeners. But (laughs) it was still bad. I would drink like five or six cans a night because, you know, it's right there. I'll just keep on drinking. Maybe not that bad, but it was still a lot, like still way more than you ever should. Like, I can't believe I haven't been diagnosed with some severe disease (laughs) from drinking that stuff for like a long time. 
Yeah, M- Mountain Dew was like our way our of life stand. Blood. Yeah, it's like you know everyone knows it's in the gaming industry for yeah <laughs> for better or worse. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean the all nighters. I had so many of them that my friends came to me and she's like, you know, what? we need to stop. <laughs> it's we need to start doing it during the day. So it's flipped to you know daytime gaming and yeah, it it was a blast. It's it's exhaust. I mean, I can't do all nighters now anymore at all. Like, not I, at all. I I'm not like I technically am supposed to work in the mornings. I've never. I'm not a morning person. Still, I'm not like I'm still more of a night person. Like, I'll, I'll go to bed at midnight and wake up at six forty five, tired, but better than if I would go to bed at like ten. I can't fall asleep if I go to bed at ten unless I'm like absolutely wiped um so i'd actually probably fare a little bit better at the all-nighters than i think but once it hits midnight maybe one i'm just done i can't i can't do all-nighters anymore wow my my cutoff anymore is 10 30 and i'll admit it oh really <laughs> i tell my wife it's just like if it's after 10 30 like you're not getting anything out of me no, no talking <laughs> no like just go to bed <laughs> i don't blame you um i want to transition a little bit into the second half of our conversation here uh of talking about the other side of land parties. We weren't just, we played a lot of Halo, a lot of Halo 3, a lot of Halo 2, um, a good chunk of Halo 1, but we also did RTS land parties, specifically StarCraft. We played a bunch of StarCraft together. Um, and I remember again, I, you said I'm the one that got you into StarCraft, right? I think so. Because, um, yeah, you got me into Halo, and then I. I don't think I was too big of a computer gamer. I was big into um, Red Alert because my uncle had that on Mm -hmm. his computer and I would always go over and that was the game. So I started it up and played it. And then, yeah, I think you probably introduced me to StarCraft and we started getting into those as we, you know, shifted not always having hate xbox land parties the problem is is not everyone like halo everyone liked halo that was like that was like you know like call of duty was for you know in the mid to late 2000s and early 2010s halo was like the early 2000s to the mid 2000s like everyone played halo like every almost every guy in our school played halo um so when we kind of transitioned to starcraft that cut down the playing field a lot in terms of people who gave a shit. Um, there wasn't a lot of people who cared all that much, but I'm happy you ended up doing it because you ended up liking it just because I don't know something about like just being able to like build like, you know, harvest resources, manage your resources, build an army, micromanage your army when you send them out and like strategize and all this. It was just, I don't know it, that type of stuff appeals to me. I'm still awful at RTS games. Like I guarantee if you and I played against each other right now, you'd still beat me. Even if you haven't played an RTS in years, uh, because I'm so bad at them. Yeah. I'm, I love strategy and that's goes in, you know, most, challenging games even halo their strategy to it like where am i gonna run where are they gonna go and how do i counteract Dude, we like psychoanalyze the maps the like you know like if someone's running this direction they have this many out ways they can leave like they could go to this this and this I and mean, you're just trying to predict where they're going to end up at right it was nuts and yeah i mean i i was into red alert got into starcraft and then I, I even played Halo Wars when that came out. That yep. was amazing. Um, One of the few console RTS games that's not awful. <laughs> RTS games on the console aren't always great just because that, that point and click with a mouse is so perfect for the genre. But if you can design it well, like Halo Wars is pretty decent, then yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I, Halo Wars was amazing when it came out. But then going back to uh, StarCraft, yeah, we... We started playing, I'm pretty sure, at your house and everything. You you got me into it. We uh, had another friend that was hanging out with us, too. We got him into it. And then um, even that continued because I, I went off to college with um, that other friend, and we continued playing it Yeah. in college. And I ended up meeting, once again, another friend. And he was into uh, computer gaming, and he introduced me to Age of Empires 2. So now it's like combining friends, starting uh, computer land parties at that point, Mm -hmm. because everyone, we were computer science slash engineering students, so everyone had a computer, and 
we just met up in each other's apartments and started playing. It's kind of funny that that's kind of where it, uh, like the land party journey, I guess, kind of ended there. Because like obviously, then after college, it's hard to get a group of friends together to do like Halo parties and stuff like that. Um, did you have any after college or like even in college? Well, even the transition from you know like the twenty tens into like college era we started seeing because of you know xbox live and the online gameplays we actually saw a decline in good multiplayer couch yep. games so it's heartbreaking th that plays into it too because um the one friend zach i'll name him um zach and i like we would go out to like gamestop purposely looking for a good couch game because we went to college together we were on same um, schedules because we had co-ops and everything. So okay. uh, we would be home at the same time. So we were looking for things that we could still do couch co-ops together. And it got hard. It's impossible. Find. Dude, they, they've, they've gotten rid of that almost. Like you need two consoles to do any type of co-op thing if you if they even offer it. Yeah. Like it's it's, <clears throat> a, it's awful. Yeah. So I, I can't say too much had continue after um, college uh, the most I did was the one friend that introduced me to Age of Empires 2 got me into League in mm, college too poor soul <laughs> <laughs> but there is a huge gap it, it kind of went down after um, left college started doing other things but then it upticked around you know 2019 in mm -hmm. the pandemic and been playing here and there since um, but other than that, uh, like recently I started probably like 2017 and up. We, uh, my girlfriend at the time and now wife. Your ex-girlfriend, we, now wife. <laughs> now wife, yeah. Um, we were hosting um, gaming parties in the sense of oh, board games. Okay, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got into Jackbox. Any Settlers of Catan? Uh I have Settlers of Catan and um, Settlers of America. I've never heard of that one. Um, that that one's also pretty nice. But um, we were having so many people that, once again, we had to look for, you know, eight player or higher games. And that's where yep. Jackbox comes into play with more. Or you have, you know, like the less strategy party games yeah, yeah, going yeah. on. Um, but we got into, uh, we got largely into Dominion. Oh, I, I've never played, but I know what you're talking mm. about. And I'm so much into it right now. I actually have my own box and I have like six okay. expansions. Like a custom made box type of thing? Or? Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to show you pictures you later. But After we're um, done recording. But we, yeah, we um, would play some games, interact, and then finish the night out with Jackbox and, you know, everyone whips out their phone and interact with the TV. It's a lot. It's probably the closest thing to easy couch co-op now for just about anything. It, yeah. it, it's, it's interesting. I, when I f first put this episode together, I don't know what my intro is going to sound like, cause I haven't recorded this. So hopefully I bring this up in the intro or have brought it up in the intro. But the idea of this episode was to talk about some like, like a seminal cultural moment or moments in my gaming life and that's why i had you on and so i i didn't think about like really like the idea of like specifically console land parties and even pc land parties to an extent they're not the same that it used to be like you can still do them but they're all connected through people's internet like we i've had like starcraft parties where we all join but you can't do it through a lan like a, through a normal lan network like you do with xbox you have to connect to the person's wi-fi or router and then you all plug in that way um which is still easier but it's still like it's still running off of internet versus actually having yeah. a, you're, there's like this extra barrier there which depending on how fast or slow the person's internet is that could be kind of sucky um so I never really thought about like, yeah, like really like 2000, like 2010s is where you really saw the decline of that type of game of like being able to play with pe play games with people together in person, um, whether it's couch co-op or if it's just land parties type of stuff, um, though. I, I'm serious about this. So we were talking off my cow. We both we ended, we both ended up getting married in 2018, kind of like uh, 
coinc- coincidentally, right? Right. You know what I did for my bachelor party? I had a Halo party. Halo party? <laughs> I had a Halo 2 party. <laughs> yeah. I had, I invited a bunch of friends over and we we went to uh, a hockey game because I'm a, you know, I'm a big hockey fan. Went to a, like a uh, a hockey game, went or went out to eat, went to a hockey game and then came back to my parents' house. I was, you know, I wasn't living with my parents anymore, but they still had more space. So, went back to my parents' house and we set up a LAN party where we had people in multiple rooms. We had TVs all set up. I went over there the night before. I, I Do you remember this? Actually, this is a little bit. Remember the night before a LAN party, you and I, if it was at my house or your house, we would always hang out and test test oh, the yeah. connection. Oh, yeah. And it was legit. It was good to test it out just because you don't want hiccups on the day of. But it was kind of a fun excuse just to hang out a little bit and dick around in Halo, just the two of us, like trying super jumps or maybe we would do a couple like one on one matches or yeah, something. Yeah, we had like to that. warm up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> For me to ultimately lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had to devastate whoever else was coming, right? That's why it, well I remember we were at the at the parties we went to that we hosted, generally you and I were the best players. And so we we could never be on the same team because it like every once in a while I'd be like, all right, CJ and I are, are on a team together. You, like I said, you were still better than me, but I was always like that, like that. It was me and you in the top two, no matter what. So we would generally have to be on separate teams because it was never fair if yeah. the two best players were on the same team. And then I would go to like other Halo parties, and I'm even like I was the worst player at some others. I had friends who, um. I had one friend named Eddie who would I, I want to call him a friend. He's a he's more of a friend now than anything, a friendly uh, a friendly acquaintance. But back then, that's a, that's a story for off mic. Um, but he uh, he was like one of those players that like there was rumors of him borderline going pro. Like he was that good. Um, he would compete in tournaments and just utterly demolish people. Like one of the best Halo players I've I've ever seen in person. Um, so he liked me well enough though. He would try to give me pointers, but I would just, it's one of the many reasons that I ultimately don't play a lot of multiplayer games because I get, I get really salty about it. I, I, when I lose, I don't take losing very well. And I, it's a flaw that I, I continue to try to work on. That's why I almost always play when I do co-op games or like multiplayer games whether it's halo or we well, can't do it in halo but like rts games like starcraft or age of empires i almost always play with friends but against bots because i don't like competing against people if i lose to a bot i don't feel bad if i lose to a player i feel like i don't know some sense of pride i don't like i my pride gets hurt or something like that i don't quite get it it's something that i still don't understand why i get so mad but i don't like that i do and i don't and i feel bad that i do it all because then i get shitty with my friends and i I hate that yeah i wouldn't say like i get mad but i know for me you very seldomly got mad my intensity level goes up the closer or the more i feel like i'm losing and that just like i i have that innate feeling like i need to win i need to prove this so my intensity level goes up so it's like i might be playing all casual and everything and she's like okay this is easy oh wait they're catching up right yeah. now now the adrenaline starting You're to like, pump in she's like <laughs> all right and i'll if you watch me like i'll you know kind of go in, up i'll tense yeah. up i'll go inward i'll stop talking i'll stop smiling right my focus is on and like I know my uh, wife now will make some comments in like normal board games and things too because like this stuff kind of comes natural to me. I really enjoy it, and especially you're a naturally if- competitive person, not in a bad way, mind you. Some people are competitive in a shitty way. I always considered you like the healthy kind of competitive. Yeah, <laughs> sincerely, I'm, be- I'm being nice. I'm but being sincere about that. I mean, some people don't appreciate when I get competitive, <laughs> and because you know I win a lot not to brag <laughs> no i, I like, no you do i'm not even saying like once again not even trying to be nice like that's why i there was a reason i said you were better than me at halo and like a lot of other games we would end up playing together you yeah. you get competitive and you want to be as good as possible at something <laughs> and if anything that's why like i don't play online as much anymore because you know full-time job kid it's just like it's I want something to relax. <laughs> yes, you don't want Not to have a like, heart attack. Just right, I don't want to be like, you know, adrenaline running late at night when I'm trying to relax. So it's like I, I go for more of the chill games anymore. I getcha, I getcha. 
Um, sorry, go, sorry, go ahead. Well, to continue on with land games, like the whole, you know, we were having these house parties, people over. We we reached eight to ten people at some points, mm-hmm. and um, then twenty twenty happened. And if anyone doesn't know what happened in that year, <laughs> you've been living under a rock. <laughs> you've been living under a rock. Um, Got hit with a little pandemic. <laughs> we had to stop those parties, Understandably and so. um, it just—we never really got to revive them because our life changed. But now, in to continue on with some of the memories and at least be doing things, like I started, like every we picked a day in a week picked a time and it's for one hour and told a bunch of friends like hey we are playing mario kart yep and i even went out and bought the family online plan and handed it out to a bunch of people because no one would play online without it right i wouldn't they wouldn't so i just bought a plan and we can get up to like eight people share it out and told them it's just like this day this time we have a discord server that we can chat we're gonna play mario kart for an hour we have fun and then we sign off yeah and then we we do it every week and that's at least you know a way we can game it's not in person but i mean we have you know friends will crop on here and there we have friends living like three hours away so it's so it's a nice way to yeah we can still play still kind of get that land party feel sort of but done kind of remotely especially a land party for an adult schedule <laughs> pretty yeah much. um i do want to we do have to wrap this up actually because this is going on we're believe it or not cj we're going on almost 50 minutes um and i have one other segment to record still and this uh, this is already going to be a long episode so i do have to wrap up this segment right here but before um i before we sign off on this part and we and you know i the listeners here will hear another transition in one final segment. Is there any other final things you want to say about like your memories of land parties, whether it's the halo stuff, the Starcraft stuff in college or whatnot, anything that you want to kind of talk about still before we sign off, man, uh, land, land parties, I would definitely say were like huge in my life. Right. I, yeah. I really enjoyed them. And even now as an adult, you know, you look back and it's that euphoric moment that you want to chase, that right? Nostal- the, game, yeah. the nostalgic euphoric moment. And it's just like, you know, all my friends have moved away. Gaming is just not the same anymore. Uh, but I've even recently went through and played, you know, on legendary, the campaign of halo one, halo two, halo three. And we can probably maybe agree Halo's just not the same after uh, 4 and up. <laughs> no, I mean, I haven't played five. But, I own 5. I haven't touched yet. I liked Halo 4 well enough, but this isn't a yeah. Halo podcast. Uh, I, I, but I, the I nostalgicness of going it. back and, you know, playing that Halo 1, Halo 2, and I even have the Master Collection and play online yep. here and there. And it's you can't beat it. <laughs> it especially in the in the two player st- in the multiplayer and land party the last land the last memory i have real quick uh i don't even think it was with it was at one of my land parties you might have been there i don't remember though my friend john and chad came and they you know you can name yourself whatever you want so chad named his character spermicide yeah. <laughs> john named his character jizz and that, that that alone is just funny. Well, they don't actually interact with each other much in the in the game, but there is a if you remember in Halo 2, when you get run over by a vehicle, it says it instead of getting killed by or stuck by is you were splattered by. So he was dry John liked to drive warthogs and other vehicles, so every time he'd run over someone, it would say, you know, Howard or Howard was splattered by jizz. (laughs) (laughs) It never gets old to me. It's childish, I know, but it makes me laugh every time. Just the absurdity of it. Because it's like those are moments that are so organic to that specific place in time. Not even talking about like like the culturally place. I mean, I mean, specifically that party at that hour, at that moment, that was just the funniest thing in yeah. that moment. And it's one of those things where everyone has those memories of land parties, of gaming with friends, or it's kind of like the feel of this episode, like gaming in a public space. I don't know how the hell I'm even going to title this, like I was telling you off mic, but like you have those memories. And I think that's kind of what this episode is meant to be about. It's meant to be like, 
it's it's a personal episode for me because I'm getting to share with my audience a little bit more about some of the memories that I actually have not talked about. I, I talk a lot about my personal shenanigans on my show, but I haven't really talked about this element. So I've been really enjoying this type of conversation. Um, but sorry, is there it's, anything else? It's been go great on? bringing up these memories because, yeah, I just haven't thought about it in like 10 years, you know, and now it's like reminiscing and makes you want to go back <laughs> well i'm telling you Play we life. have a little bit of time after we're done recording i'm saying we should boot up halo 2 just to practice some super jumps oh yeah <laughs> practice super jumps i don't know i'm gonna dual wield some smgs and run you down or the probably the uh master combo with the smg and the um plasma rifle, plasma rifle. or the <laughs> the the what is it you would have like and the sword was always really good. Or also, I remember uh, when you would bridge yourself, host, host shoddy was a thing. Oh, uh, yeah. You had that split second extra, split millisecond faster reaction because everyone was connecting to you as opposed to you connecting to a different Xbox. And so you had a higher, you would have a faster reaction time just you. Even if everyone had the exact same reaction speed of like I to button press you would still be quicker because you had the host. So host shoddy yeah. was a big thing. So I even remember you would specifically bridge yourself host. So that way anyone else who would grab host shoddy, you're like, I'm going to have the shotgun. So I, and I won't abuse it. Unlike everyone <laughs> else over here, which you actually didn't. From what I remember, you did not abuse the host shoddy. You took it. So no one else would have it, but it was, it was kind of like taking a toy away from a misbehaving kid. You didn't really use it all that much, but you would take it away. Like no one else is going to have this because I'm not going to, let anyone cheat i'm gonna cheat so no one else can cheat yeah you gotta take the toy away and, <laughs> exactly. you know it's just like if if you're that good it's just like all right i have it you have to kill me for it now <laughs> <laughs> oh man but dude this has been wonderful it's been wonderful reminiscing with you and it's been 10 years we'll have to hang out more often like i'm on your discord server now i'll try to hop in for some of your mario stream your mario your mario kart nights even if i can't play yet because i don't have mario kart 8 on the switch yet anyway uh but i can at least chat, hop in and voice chat and hang out and shoot the shit and whatnot but dude cj this has been awesome thank you so much for setting aside some time on a work night no less to come over to my house and just kind of reminisce on a podcast for a couple hours so this has been awesome dude thank hey, you no problem thanks for having me when when you drop that message it's just like yes <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> I, I know you don't have a big online presence, but is there anything you would like to plug? Any social media? Anything you want the, my listeners to know about? If nothing, you can just say no. But I always like to give the uh, give the offer. Nah, I'm just a mystery character. You're online. just a mystery character. So in, in Halo One, CJ would actually you'd be the the you'd, you'll be Stumpy. We'll just call you Stump Stumpy. <laughs> from Halo One. So yeah. all right, dude. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Another huge thank you to CJ for hopping on the episode here. I was so happy to be able to catch up with him after 10 years, but he was awesome to have on and talk about all of our Halo land party memories and a little bit of StarCraft. And once again, another perfect transition. Well, perfect-ish, I should say. Uh, going into our final segment of this episode, I'm going to be joined by my friend Jamie, who we had a lot of LAN parties. But like I said at the top of the episode, he calls it something a little bit different, but there's lots of StarCraft involved there too. So um, yeah, no more rambling. Let's get on with it. Here is my chat with my good friend, Jamie. <laughs> discussion on whatever the hell this episode's going to be called gaming in public 
social gaming. I'm still not quite sure. By the time this comes out, all you listeners will know. But joining me to round out this final third or this final segment of this episode is my good friend Jamie. He's been on the podcast numerous times, Final Fantasy VI, ranking Final Fantasy VII characters, a bunch of other shenanigans. Uh, Castlevania One we did, also the original Final Fantasy I think I had you on for. You've been on the show quite a lot. So, uh, Jamie, first off, how are you doing? I am doing good. Hey, (laughs) Cove. Happy to have you back on. And we are discussing here, uh, uh, the reason I have you on here is because of Battle Fests, something that we uh, we did a lot of in college. But for my listeners, understandably so, that title has no context. It means nothing to them. Mm -hmm. So to help them understand, what the hell is a Battle Fest? Well, a Battle Fest is something that we actually created a long time ago. Uh, when I was probably single digits in age, we used to get a bunch of computers, physically haul them around, network them together, and play whatever games there were. So it was essentially a LAN party. It was but a LAN party, I feel like... but cooler. It was a battle fest. <laughs> I also think, though, the the reason why a battle fest was a little more unique than a LAN party was that usually, for, in my mind, a LAN party was like, let's pick one game, and that's what we're going to play all night. Battle fest, it was never that. It was kind of you would hop around oh, from yeah. game to game, whatever was kind of like passing our, passing our fancy, or what striking our fancy, <laughs> whatever the <laughs> phrase it is. So the biggest difference to us is that when we have a... A, a LAN party, you know, you think LAN party, you think Halo, you think people getting their consoles together. No, no, no. No, no. I also think of like Doom and Quake and StarCraft. Yeah, no, no, no. But that's, that's like, Battle Fest. That's yeah. Battle Fest. So Battle Fest is specific, in your mind, Battle Fest is specifically PC a PC, gaming. a PC LAN party. Yeah, because we... <laughs> Politically correct LAN party. No. <laughs> um, no, Battle Fest way back when were Doom 1. It was StarCraft 1, it was Quake 1 and Quake 2, we played all the Quake expansions, uh, Return to Castle Wolfenstein as we got a little older, some of the early Call of Duty games we'd mm-hmm. get together, um, really anything that you could network a PC game with, that's what we did. We would get um, about 8 to 10 people together that's in wild. a basement of about 3 rooms, back when you needed server computers to run some of this stuff, Yeah, and then we would just run wires through the uh, drop ceilings to our hubs and we would just play all night we would start around eight we would take breaks we would go outside we'd take some drinks we would get food we'd come back we'd play until four to five in the morning like it was you battled and then you'd shuffle teams up people would hop on other people's computers Mm -hmm. or you would just do do different teams uh, and then just go so we'd have a main room of about five people and then we had two side rooms of about two to three other people, depending on who was there. And then we would just go, we'd, we'd fight for about half an hour in whatever game. We'd take a break. We'd all shit talk each other <laughs> outside <laughs> about what just happened. Yeah. And then we would shuffle teams and do it again all night long. That's a battle fest. Now, the person that you that organized this when you were a kid, though, was your uncle, right? Yeah. And Absolutely. you got some story. I mean, you don't have to share the oh, show. stories. You don't have to share all of them. I know some of them uh, I don't think are listener appropriate, <laughs> but you are more than any stories you'd like to share about like your memories of Battle Fest with your uncle at that time. Oh, well, uh, to put it into context, when we talk about Battle Fest, it, it evolved into something that we did as kids, mm-hmm. but it did start with him. So it was him and all his buddies. They organized this when me and my brother were probably seven eight yeah. something super young and uh a little too young arguably, arguably yeah, yeah oh yeah for sure doom and if, quake but, if i yeah. remember uh some of the early the very first battle fest my memory was like i probably shouldn't have been there it was because <laughs> it, it was a whole bunch of like mid 20 year olds to early 30 year olds uh and they would just come over and some of them wouldn't even be there for the battle fest it would be a party for the, my first earliest memories we'd play the battle fest but then they'd have their friends over and they'd just sit and they would probably drink and then some of them would smoke over there and it was wild and i was just like i have a computer and i'm playing with a bunch of people this is great uh, yeah. right and like you know I, I was involved in any of that stuff but it was just me and my brother and we would participate in the games and then we got older and we're like all right well we actually have some motor skills here we can actually win win <laughs> compete in the games rather than just be fodder um, and that's when it started getting to those like uh, four and fours, five on fives. And it just about stopped being less party and more like just gaming for the fun. of Yeah. It. So uh, it's probably good if I just start way back to being how we even started Battlefest. Yes. So 
my uncle got his first computer and I don't even know what it was. I think it was maybe a penny, Pentium one okay. for people that recall that yeah. it, may, it may have been even older than that, but he got his computer. And then of course we were kids. So we were like, well, we want to play. And my uncle's like, well, no. So let me get your own computer. So he got <laughs> us a computer. So we would stop pestering him. But then me and my brother would pester. How much disposable income did he have back then? Well, he, uh, he may or may not have moved out of his mom's basement. So when we talk about basement dwellers, this is a basement dweller. This okay. is at our grandmom's house, right? Um, which we would spend a lot of our time at. And he lived there, still lives there. So he still has lots of money um, to just buy us computers because he wanted to play with somebody. You know, there was no online gaming at that point. Yeah. In the, the mid 90s, I guess. Not easily accessible. Yeah. At the very no. Least. There was games. like there was like um like Doom specifically. You could download Doom mods and stuff like that and, and custom Mac pa- map packs. Yeah, but like, we did that all the time. It was still like you know it wasn't like it was easy to play online and stuff like that. Yeah, but, it was so much easier for us to just get people and just hang out together. Um, so he wanted to include us in this though, mm-hmm. right? So he had his computer, and then me and my brother had ours, and then we would fight. So then we each got our own computer. So then he got his own room, and then me and my brother got our own room. So we would also be separated from him, <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't have to hear us. And then we you know, we got a little older, and we got two friends, Jeff and Marcus, and then they came over all the time. So now it's the four of us plus him. Well, you know, it's still the mid '90s, and uh, we needed a server computer for some of our stuff because our computers were super weak. Pentium ones, maybe my computer over there that I think is still over there was a Pentium two pro, you know, and it can't run anything. Yeah. It, it couldn't, it couldn't run anything today, but, um, like we each had our own stations at that point. So we had four computers. Did your uncle buy your friends their own stations too? Yeah. Yeah. Oh he just God. kept, he kept building. Cause like, he, look, we had the battle fest going at that point periodically. Yeah. So he's like, you know what? Let me just, instead of people bringing their computers, let me just build some here. I'll just build some more here. So he built his own. And he built wow. all of these. He built all the. He bought the parts, put them together, and that's where we learned to put computers together. Yeah. So we had his, my two, my other friends too. We had a server computer, so we had six going on at that point, all networked together. And then we ended up building at least another computer in his room behind him because we had our cousins that would come over for holidays and stuff. Mm. So well, we play Starcraft. That goes up to eight players. So we got to make a computer for them, <laughs> and then another computer out in the main room. So we had three in his room two in another room and then three in the main room again dear lord so we had and then we stopped there he stopped there and then at that point oh, only we had, there you know you know no big deal <laughs> you know just casually had all these computers laid around i don't know people who had consoles we had that too it was my uncle would build the computers and then my mom back at home would give us the consoles so we had the best of both worlds yeah so we had we had LAN parties. Your we had console gaming, which was just gaming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. We had regular gaming, which was console gaming. And I guess everybody else had LAN parties. They'd come over and, and ha- hang out. That was just regular gaming to us. Then we had Battle Fest, which was yeah. over at my uncle's. And from there, we just played stuff. We had all those games. And then that's how the Battle Fest started. So when we said, yo, let's have a Battle Fest, we meant unplug your computers Let's get together, you nerds. Hook them back up. And then we'd spend half the night hooking them all up, making sure things would work. And then we would play. And it's kind of funny what it ended up turning into for us in college was even though uh, he does not live with his parents, (laughs) Justin, who unfortunately could not be on the episode today, uh, he kind of turned was like the role of your uncle in this at some point. He had like six different laptops or like two or three yeah. different laptops. Yeah. And he would set up like we would all we would some of us would bring our own rigs, but like he would always have an extra laptop. And it was always something slightly underpowered that was just enough to play Starcraft oh, perfect. Or, yep. or something like that. And um, yeah, it's kind of I, I, that's what turned it. We started putting Battlefest on at his place then. Yeah, because he had the space for it. So we I remember that I remember bringing my computer more than one one time to his place we'd set up mm-hmm. um and then we'd just throw some stuff down and then there'd also be some smash going on in the background <laughs> oh i mean when we had our I, i've talked about this before on the show uh actually on the super mario brothers new super mario brothers we episode because we did play that a little yep. bit at this um pizza tuesday when yep. that was a thing for like what five that, years that every reached tuesday. hard for a while yeah yeah and smash was what we played most of the time but periodically we would break out something a little bit different and we would uh play the battle fest type of stuff i remember yep. one of the last ones we did 
was it was back at your old place back when you and your wife lived closer or lived in uh i'm not gonna say the town but like lived closer <laughs> to us yeah and it was that apartment upstairs mm-hmm. you know what i'm talking yep. about yep, yep. and we all brought our our desktops over yeah that's diablo 3 release we, oh i'm sorry no no there's was, that too there it was, was starcraft 2 we had a starcraft 2 yes the, the, the we, diablo 3 release i was i might save that story for um my Diablo three episode, but I, you yeah, know, screw it. I'll tell it now. I'll just retell it later. Cause I don't know what I'm doing in Diablo three episode anyway, but Di- when Diablo three came out, I remember me and our mutual friend, Ian, mm-hmm. Ian was living with us at the time and we all got our computers out and we brought them out. I think mine was in my room, but his was like all the way out in the kitchen and we were all trying to log into Diablo three <laughs> and that infamous, I think it was like error 30 something error 30. I was going to say 37, but that's a Kevin Smith reference. So I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So anyway, with, with battle Fest, though, So all I remembered was having stuff over at Justin's and then mm-hmm. either that or, and this drove me up a wall, but I understood why it had to happen. We would have it at 1130 at night because you didn't get off of yep. work from Pizza Hut yep. until like 10 or 11. That's right. So then we would, wouldn't would start till 1130. And then I would be like, I got to go. It would be like 1230 or one o'clock. I'm like, I got to go, guys. I'm so tired. And you're like, it's just getting started. <laughs> just starting. Like, it's one o'clock you in the play morning. the first match. Let's go. Now, with both of us being parents, I can't imagine anything starting at 1 a.m. No, it would shut down. Two o'clock is the is my peak anymore these days. I, you know, unless, yeah. you know, the, the occasion struck in which we get another game together. I would love to have it. I mean, I'm sure you're right. That's because would... it's a vacation for us at this point. It's not just a casual get together. It's like, a, hey, we're going to be gone all night long, ladies. Yeah. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even think I could do it. I, though, periodically, I am able to get out of the house for extended periods of time. Like, I I do it very seldomly because I don't want to, like, pawn off parenting duties. I feel guilty about that. But I went to that convention a couple weeks ago. Uh, I went to Retro World Expo, mm-hmm. and Courtney just watched uh, watched our kid yeah, the whole time. They get old enough? You can. Well, I mean, yeah. I need to say, hurry up and grow up to my little one. I'm oh, like, that's come what on, you're guy. Saying. Hurry up and grow up, and then you'll be fine. <laughs> then I can start beating you in StarCraft like my uncle <laughs> did to me. That's right. I'm going to toss him out. He doesn't know that area uh, exists yet. Um, we're going to start him off with Nintendo, and then he's going to he's going to show me he can play Nintendo, and then we're going to give him the <laughs> he's Super Nintendo. Prove his worth. That's right. He's not going to get the internet for a while. He's not going to know what other games are. I'm going to hide my PS4, my five, my my PC. That exists. That's fine. That's me. That's mine. You can't. That's password protected. Here's Nintendo kid. <laughs> Play it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I got I got one of the Raspberry Pis. We'll just hook them up with that. That's honestly a smart way. It's gonna do be it. great. Better than what I have, which is like everything's hooked up at once. But anyway, um, <laughs> so I remember a story that you told me from one of your battle fests, like prior to us kind of starting mm-hmm. our thing, was it was a StarCraft match where I don't know if it was your uncle or one of his friends, probably Doomer. Probably I don't I don't think you've ever told me any of the names of the people oh, uh, or like what what their nicknames were. The yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, the one guy I'm still and still talk to every once in a while. We just connect and my and my brother and I like see him like every year or two. Like we just say, hey, what's going on? It's just Doomer. That was his tag back in the day. Yeah. You know, we play Doom. He, he loved Doom. Doomer. Um, I still call him that. But uh, if you're talking about the Overlord, yes. Yep, yep. That's Doomer. What a guy. What? A, okay, so. We were probably maybe 10 or 11 by the time, um, like his friends, not the other guys we played with, right? It wasn't even like a friend thing. It was like, it was like, it was like palling around at that point with them. Like everybody was just really chill. Um, you know, he would talk to us and hang out and he would goof with us. Like he pulled the trick on me where we would go, he went into Quake 3 Team Arena because we play the game a ton and he would pull down the tilde and he would type in some gibberish into the console because i didn't know what the hell the console was yeah and he'd hit enter and he's like okay he would sit in the chair and do it he'd stand up he'd sit to my side i'd sit in the chair he'd put his hand around the back of the tower unplug my mouse and then i and then tell me that he put in a code into the computer to disable my mouse from working. <laughs> he pulled shit like that on me all the time as a kid. and you believe and it i believed it i was like whoa that's so cool what is that code and then and he probably just was like coming up like you know resting his hand on your tower make it seem like he was yeah, just putting yep. his arm there you know i'm just leaning against this when in actuality he was just unplugging your mouse yeah and then i got to the point where i like i kind of gave up i was like the mouse doesn't work and then uh you know, I'm trying to type on the keyboard and he just takes the mouse and just walks away with it unplugged. <laughs> I was like, okay, there it goes. I was like, oh, all right, there it is. But uh, he would do stuff like that all the time. And in StarCraft, uh, we were awful. We were, my brother and I were just awful. 
Um, but uh, he decided to mess with us because they were really good at the time. And he played Zerg. And all he would do, I was Terran. And I tried doing this nice little balanced base thing because I was only playing single player on like easy mode. Yeah. And all he did was just overlords. If you know anything about StarCraft 1, there is a population limit of 200 units, except for overlords because overlords are what give you the population for, so, for the zerg for the zerg so yeah. you can have a limitless amount of them he must have sent a hundred to 200 to 300 like he was just messing with us at this point and all i could see on my entire screen was overlords my guys were shooting they couldn't kill the overlords fast enough. i didn't have enough units i wasn't good enough in the game and like it was he would he would take my entire base out with uh, a one one squad of zerglings because everything was so occupied shooting the overlords <laughs> first and i was like this is this is ridiculous so like it took him probably five or ten minutes to destroy my base but he just came into the other room because it was during the battle fest so he would send them over send the zerglings and then he'd walk over to my computer and just be like wow that really sucks man <laughs> i was like i can't do anything <laughs> so you know we'd mess with each other like that that was the best part about the uh the battle fest any in-game gaming is just when you can just rip on somebody live in their face <laughs> it was the best see and that's why i like in a weird sense it's something i'm envious of because i remember our battle fest and i i've, I've i think i've said this before in the podcast. because if i haven't i'm just gonna say it now anyway i am not always the best at like taking trash talking like yeah, i get yeah. way too into it i get way too like sensitive about crap i've gotten better over the years but oh man was i I'm just, I was a whiny bitch. I'm just going to say it. Like it was, I felt, I'm embarrassed by it. Like, and it's, listen, I understand like if someone doesn't like trash talking, you shouldn't necessarily go out of your way to be, and to your credit, mm -hmm. you were never actually really mean to me, like ever. No, I was only ever mean to Justin and Micah and Smash. Because they could handle it. I was yeah. just, I was just never, I <laughs> yeah. could never handle it. And I, I, I think it's one of those things where I was always envious, not necessarily of the, like the trash talking itself, but like, I wish I didn't have such a thin skin over oh, something sure. that was clearly just like, yeah. not serious. It's, it's just, games. Just, it's just, it's just games. It's like, it was, it wasn't actually any insults. There was never any personal attacks, mm -hmm. but for some reason in my mind, but so, but I still loved all the battle fest. Nonetheless, like oh, yeah. I loved, uh, specifically, because of you, I got tried to get really good at StarCraft. Never did. Yeah, we we played some pretty hardcore StarCraft games. StarCraft never, two games back th in the day. I think the issue was is that once this is why I don't play competitive mm -hmm. is because I get real salty when I lose. Yeah, I get real salty when I lose too. Star StarCraft, but you never two, took it out on the people. No, StarCraft two was a whole different level of saltiness for me though. Yeah, really? Because people. Ugh, that was the first game I tried to like league up in and yeah. actually play competitive online. And that was my mistake. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> People know what they're doing. I don't know what I'm doing as far as like the best builds, the best times. Yeah. And like when we played, I would win, but like by five seconds, like I would get a unit out right away or I would block you up a ramp right away. Like, like they were good games. Yeah. But, uh, StarCraft 2 made me salty playing against other people. And it gave me, I swear to God, that game gave me anxiety. I play. remember. Like, I, I just remember. I could feel my heart. And I was like, nope, I can't play this game anymore. I don't know what it is. StarCraft 1 was so casual. I play other um, strategy games. But StarCraft 2, I just can't handle the stress. We should do a StarCraft 1 night sometime again. We should do a StarCraft 1 night. I would play. Night. I would. St StarCraft would 1 play. is still a lot of fun. StarCraft 1, Brood War is the best. Terran. Terran. Ah. Uh, you always liked Zerg. I, I do remember. like Zerg. That's because me and my brother, all you got to do is Zerg. Zerg is easy. You just mass Hydralisk yeah, and just go. And just like, go. They're such a great all around unit and yep. everything. Um, some of the other memories I have of our Battle Fest, I remember us playing uh, the one of the Wolfensteins. Return or, to Castle Wolfenstein. We might have played Return. We also played, uh, what was it, like offensive or something front. Hold on. I'm blanking on the name of it right now. Um, I'll look was it up. It, tell me about it. Was it like you could pick different classes? Um, and then like capture flags and stuff and like blow up certain checkpoints enemy territory yes okay yep that's what i remember us playing enemy territory which was i think free to play yeah it was a free and open source mm -hmm. multiplayer first person shooter game uh with the within the wolfenstein series and it was originally planned to, i'm reading this off of wikipedia it mm -hmm. was originally planned to be a commercial expansion pack to return to castle wolfenstein yes and later as a standalone game however due to problems with the single player aspect the multiplayer portion was released in 2003 as freeware as a freeware yes. standalone game which yep. what an amazing thing like that's wild that they just like gave it away that game um return to castle wolfenstein as a single player game was just fine but if the multiplayer you're talking about, the enemy territory, absolutely. That was like a, 
I don't know when Team Fortress came out, mm-hmm. but it was it was pretty much just like their version of Team Fortress. Yes. Oh my gosh, I remember that. Now. Yeah, you yeah. you would access and allies, of course, pick the different map, and then there would be objectives you would have to do where um, you would you would like progress, mm-hmm. right? You capture the flag, and you capture a flag. That's where you would spawn at to move forward. But it wasn't like the big battlefield maps like today. You'd spawn. It was like a linear back and forth push. But there were multiple routes to take in each map. So like you can have people assaulting the front, going in the back, going in the second back one. So yeah. like you really had to plan your assault. Now that game was also designed for probably minimum six v six, and I think we could only muster maybe a four v four. Yeah, <laughs> but it was still a great game. Like different classes you could pick: the engineer, the soldier, the the medic, lieutenants. That was that was some peak peak multiplayer when we get also the really, we only got to get it to work once we did medal of honor allied assault as well those were good once, yep once those were twice. those were all in the original battle fest rotations we did when mm. we were kids we played the medal of uh, medal of honor allied assault we did the return to castle wolfenstein that was the best one you play a match you go outside you rag on each other you come back shuffle teams do it yeah. again that those were great nights um we should have another battle fest. We really should have. <laughs> like I knew this was gonna happen. I'm just saying uh, recording it. I uh have a basement, so <laughs> that is very true. <laughs> I you know you can't have these things without a basement. So no, I do have true. a basement with a lot of space. Honestly, I bet you because and also with your kid, that's way far away. We can be loud. We don't have to worry about like waking him up, right? Uh you'd think. It, you'd it, th- the sound is more side to side, not up and down. But uh We'll just we'll just send the wife and kid away. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work out. Um, oh man, I can. Br- oh man, it's a pain in the ass to bring my PC. Oh, I don't need to bring my PC. I have a gaming laptop now. Oh, there you go. There, there you go. Go. That's what I've been using for uh, my presentations at panels now. So that works out nicely. Oh, perfect. Um, yeah. So okay. So I remember. I remembered all that. You know, StarCraft mm-hmm. and. I think at the very least, uh, actually, any memories for you have of our Battle Fest that you that you can conjure oh, up that man. I have, that we haven't brought up so far. Let me think about that. I just remember. I remember the StarCraft release you were talking about. I remember the Diablo three. We did that. I remember when we were in that apartment. We definitely got everybody together. I think I saw pictures of that. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure Heather took a picture of just because she, she walked in the room. And she's like, "What is this? What are you people doing?" <laughs> <laughs> and there, there was probably five or six of us, and we were all just. Diablo 3 because you know Diablo 3 came out in 2012 and the last Diablo 2 game came out in 20 or 2002 the, the Diablo 2 remaster um well came remaster came out but like 20. it was 2002 when Diablo 2 oh, came yeah. out so and then it, like it had been decade. 10 years yeah and now you know Diablo 4 came out 10 years later nobody cares but besides the point it was yeah. a big thing so we're like oh let's play some Diablo 3 but uh all of our battle fests were pretty good the, what I was going to say then, uh, I, we have to give an honorable mention to this because it wasn't technically part of any battle fests, mm-hmm. but we referenced it off mic, our Diablo 2 vacation. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the best part is that you just keep making new characters. So, you know, anytime there's a Diablo, somebody's like, Diablo? You want to play Diablo? Yeah. yeah, all right, let's make some new characters. And then we always go back to Diablo 2. We, so back when we were in college, you, myself, Justin, Micah, who's been on the show before, a bunch of our friends. Uh, I realize a lot of the people from Pizza Tuesday has yeah. been on the podcast mm-hmm. now. Um, we took a road trip out to Ohio to visit Justin's sister who lived out there. Mm-hmm. and Just just her sister. There was nobody else. Yeah, Ohio. nobody there. Not her family, <laughs> not her husband, not her kids. I'm sorry, it was all of them in one house in a giant field, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was just the middle of nowhere. Um, but no, we uh, <laughs> we went there. And instead of spending time with his sister or going out to visit places, seeing sites, we played a lot of Diablo 2. A lot of it. A and, lot of Diablo And a two. lot of that comes down to, to Justin and his laptops yep. that, he, that he had, those low-powered things. It was just enough to run D2. Nobody had towers, yep. but it was like, oh, look at these crappy laptops we got laying around. Let's, let's put a couple of them together. And we would literally... I we were there for a full week, and I'm pretty sure at least four or five out of the seven days we spent all day doing nothing, no, nothing. but Diablo two. Yeah. I'm sure there was like we went out somewhere. I think some sometimes we would hang out in the morning playing Diablo, then do something in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like, the second we get home, we're like Diablo. Diablo <laughs> was pretty much it. We just it was like a week of Diablo straight, and I remember. Uh, Micah was a druid. Mm-hmm. Justin was a paladin. I was a necromancer. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what Andrew or you were. I was a barbarian because you were barbarian. That playthrough, I, I'm pretty certain, 
we all play those characters and, you know, everybody goes home and they just forget about their characters. But I'm pretty sure that's the, those are the characters that Justin and I said, Paladin, Barbarian, we're finally going to beat this game through all the way to hell mode. Because we restarted the game so many times and we get through normal, we get through nightmare, but then you actually have to try to get through hell. Um, So we finally sat down and said, you're Paladin, my Barbarian, let's just do this. And we finally beat it after we got home from Ohio. We kept playing for like a couple weeks later. We're like, done. Beat the game. We took the screenshots. We're done with D2. And then a week later, like new character. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I want to have another D two run or something. Oh, like it's that. so good! I love Diablo two. So I want to play the right? remastered one. I haven't gotten around to. to do you own D2. it or? I do not, but that's easily remedied. Yeah, I might. <laughs> I might pick up a copy. I'm not sure yet. I love Diablo two, mm-hmm. man. I love that game so much. Um, I might actually have to pick up a copy just for when I inevitably do an episode on it. There you go. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't really have much more to add about Battlefest. I just want to, this was, I thought thought would be a nice way to kind of like chronologically wrap up like kind of like social gaming or whatever, oh, this, sure. whatever the hell this episode. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy be. I could bring that to everyone because my brother and I, you know, we were P- Pete's Tuesday and uh, we were like, hey, you guys want to have Battlefest? I'm like, what is that? And I'm like, well, let me tell you, it's about getting your computers together in one spot, networking together for an hour, make sure everything works and then playing. Until gonna, everybody starts dropping off like flies. And not going to lie, like, that is a much better name for a land party than yep. just calling it a land party. Like, calling it Battlefest evokes memories versus land party. Like, because you don't, like, I would link together a lot of Halo 2 stuff, like right. I mentioned with CJ in the last segment. But that, what we didn't call them land, land parties. They were Halo 2 parties. Exactly. It's specific to the Halo. It's specific to whatever the event generation would be. was. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I mean, well, you the, were old enough. Like, you're, you're my age. You would have, you just never got into Halo, though. Yeah, skip, it just wasn't your pass. company. It was, I, I played Halo 1 because it was on PC. And we all played it. We all got together. It's a good game. We, that was part of the Battlefest rotation for a bit. We did the, the, uh, not Warsong Gulch. That's Warcraft. The, the one oh, that's a gulch. Um, uh, yeah, I'm blanking on the. I know yep. what you're talking. Yeah, about well, now. we did that a lot. Like we did a bunch of three v threes and four v fours when we could get four people together for Halo. You know, not a dig, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, that was in the rotation. We that was a a good PC that we game that we could play multiplayer, single player through, and then also we played that as part of the battle fest because you yeah, remember part of the battle fest is the fighting. So when we get together and we played co op, it's still battle fest. But the battle comes from the shooting each other, the doom, the quake, yeah. the Wolfenstein. Like you're fighting each other. That's where that's where that term came from. I, I do miss playing a lot of that type of I think it'd be really fun to host a couple of them again at some point. Yeah. Like uh we can throw down some Quake 3 Team Arena all day, every day. I don't even know if I have Quake 3. Nobody does. That game's so old. I I was forced to that's where actually I got my first person shooter skills from. I was forced to learn how to play Quake 3 Team Arena because my uncle was really bad at the game. Oh, really? And uh, well, I shouldn't say bad. He was just subpar. So he couldn't beat the other guys. So he would have me come over, say, hey, come downstairs. We're going to play some Quake. I was like, I don't want to play Quake at homework. We're going to play some Quake. Homework, homework be damned. (laughs) Other games be damned. We'd sit down and like I would lose because he was practicing. And then one day it just clicked. And I was like, this is how you play a first person shooter game. And I, I won one match. And then he never won another match ever again for the rest really? of time against me to the point where uh, we'd be playing these big battle fests and I started winning them now because now I knew how to play. You can buy Quake 3 Arena right now for 60% off you on can. good old games for six bucks. Six bucks. Easy. Yeah, uh, they had a, a long time ago, a couple, you know, maybe six or seven years, you could play Quake 3 Team Arena in like a browser. And I did that just to re- remind myself that was a mistake. The people c- that play that game today are the absolute best of the best. And I was like, wow, I got a couple kills in, but man, am I trash. My, I got to shake the rust off of that game. I mean, as with almost anything, like when people have like, I don't know, that's why I never liked. I, I think playing against friends is so much more fun yeah. because it's it the uh, you know the skill level that's what it is that you play and you have fun but you understand everybody's skill level you go online and you just 
just assume that everybody's well, I think you. that's where you you thrive because I remember even in like um Smash Brothers like you could always beat Micah. Yeah. Micah on a technical level I believe was technically a better, better player than you. Yeah. But because you knew him and you knew oh, his yeah. tendencies, you knew his every his mouth, move. you could like you could easily and I should say easily. He was always a challenge. But there he was, was there was times he won. And we went back okay, yeah. so put it in context. Mike and I have known each other since ninth grade yeah and then starting in ninth grade our hangouts were hey come over to my place i got a gamecube and it's like yo you got smash my parents will only play that that says it's violent well let me tell you <laughs> son we can play it right here and then every day after school for five days a week the entire school year from ninth grade all the way through until we graduated in 12th grade we played smash every day we play for an hour he'd win a few i'd win a lot <laughs> so, sometimes i had a bad day and he'd win but like we just kept playing um, I can tell you one one time Mike was having a bad day at school. He came over and we played the first match and we always did a three game stock, right? To keep moving yeah. new characters. And I just wiped him 3 0. And like he was not having it. I remember he stood up, he threw his controller down, super pissed off, kind of startled me, yeah. picked his bag up and left. And he said, I'll see you tomorrow. That's it. And then he left. He's like, he just threw it down hard, said, I'll see you tomorrow, and just walked out. I was like, okay. And then he shouted back up. He's like, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> and then just left. And then we, we picked it up again the next day and we kept playing. So Honestly, we did smash for years. Props to him for that emotional maturity, man. Like yep. to be like, I'm pissed off. Not Jamie's fault. Let me throw it back to him. Let him know I'm not mad at you. Just. <laughs> yeah, no, it was good. I was like, oh, okay. But at that point we were still in ninth grade and we sat at the same table history. So I'm like, tomorrow I'm like, yeah, bro, he's still coming over. <laughs> you know, he couldn't get away from me. But that's, uh, that's how we got so good at smash. But all right, well, I think we should wrap up this segment. I think we've battle fested ourselves. Up. Well, that sounds weird. I'm going to leave that <laughs> in. Fuck it. I don't care. Um, but now it makes me want to have another battle fest, play some Diablo 2, play some StarCraft 1. Oh, StarCraft 1 for sure. StarCraft 2 is great. I still like that. But Diablo, or sorry, StarCraft 1 is just where my heart is. Yep. Um, still is. I still like the art style of that. Uh, but yeah, I, Jamie, thank you for, again for coming over, man, and for recording. It's funny. Um, this episode is the first episode I've recorded in quite some time where other than the the day we're recording, this is the day the Uncharted Golden Abyss episode is dropping. Um, between Uncharted Golden Abyss and this, like all three segments of this, it's the first time I've recorded in person with people in over three years. Oh, wow pandemic man and that's all true. that and like that's all true. the podcasting friends i've made all live in across all live across the country so uh, i don't get to record in person as much as i'd like to anymore but dude thank you once again for joining me this was a lot of fun yeah absolutely i'm only 10 minutes down the road so uh you need somebody else i got I, you. <laughs> you i will probably have to have you back on for the diablo episode yes when we inevitably do a diablo 2 one that's so sure. but, all right thank you very much sir all right guys see you thanks That is it. That is the end of my land party memories. I can't thank all of my guests who joined me enough for this episode. My mom, CJ, Jamie, thank you all so much again. It really meant the world that you set aside some time to chat with me about some of my favorite memories growing up and just gaming and all this good stuff. I had so much fun recording this, and I hope you all enjoyed listening to this. I know this isn't necessarily a historical deep dive, but this is a little bit of the context of gaming history, even though it's my personal history that you know every, everyone's personal gaming history adds to the context of a game adds to the context of a game's history so i i really enjoyed getting to explore a little bit of that for myself with this episode and i hope you all enjoyed it with all that said before i send you off of course i have to give my shout outs and my plugs and all those shenanigans so if you enjoyed this episode and you want to show your support please consider giving it a five-star rating or review on apple podcast or whichever podcasting app you use because that helps more people find the show and it makes me feel warm and fuzzy and i like feeling warm and fuzzy you can also support the show monetarily patreon.com slash still loading pod it would really mean a lot to me if you 
checked out what I have to offer there. For a dollar a month, you get all the episodes earlier with better audio quality as well as access to voting rights. There's quarterly polls. Uh, the most recent poll that won was Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. That will be a game that I cover at some point on the show uh, because my patrons voted on it. For $4 a month, you get everything I mentioned at the $1 level, plus two bonus episodes every month. And then for $5 a month, you get everything I mentioned before, plus access to Still Bonding, which is my monthly James Bond podcast where me and a bunch of friends bond over 007. Um, that is pretty much it for my own plugs. Uh, before I let you all go, of course, I have to shout out my friends over at the Bit by Bit Foundation. The Bit by Bit Foundation is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to put video games and video game consoles in the hands of kids receiving inpatient care at hospitals. So if you want to support them, go to bitbybitfoundation.org and consider donating. That is all the time I have for you on this episode of Still Loading. Thank you all once again for listening, and I will see you all next time. <laughs>